The problem is just a fundamental misunderstanding. This, like, this all just comes down to misunderstanding of how the government works. Like, that's, no, that's literally all no, the stop, 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 you guys stop think, telling me. Stop telling you guys me. think that Biden can come out. You guys think, no, you think that Biden could just yeah. come out with a sword and shield God. and start oh, slapping angry. heads off, okay, in, in Congress. They can't do that. We don't have I the power to stop I want to say that. I did say that. I did not say that. I want to be go. I never said that. You keep saying that I'm saying that. I'm not even saying that he's going to succeed. I'm not even okay. saying he's going to succeed. The then original question, the original on question was what? There's a, there is. Oh, no, no, no. oh my god! Oh, oh, oh my god! Shut up! Um, hi. Hi. Oh wow! The Omni liberal himself. <laughs> so we're talking about responding to domestic terrorism. Talking about the response um, of uh, the, the uh, House of Representatives, specifically to what happened on Thursday, right? Um, when uh, QAnon uh, supporters or whatever uh, were uh, saying um, that um, uh, uh, we're saying that uh, the, the, that Thursday was it March fourth um, was the uh, true inauguration day when Donald Trump um, was going to take control of the U.S. Just made that shit up. Sure, whatever. All right, whatever. Um, yeah, they made that up. Um, uh, but the threat was real, right? That they would uh, maybe uh, uh, take some sort of violent act against the states, right? I was reading some sort of this article. Uh, I'll, I'll post it in chat again if I can find it. Um, yeah, I'll post this in chat again. Uh, and it was making uh, the, um, the argument. Uh, it's right there in chat. Uh, it was making the argument that um, the House of Representatives, uh, which uh, at least paused its um, session at the time, right, uh, because of this supposed threat, um, that that sh should not have been, been the response. That it, they should have kept going just as the Senate did, right? Should not have interrupted because um, uh, that's giving in to uh, domestic terrorists, giving in to their demands, right? And the very fact that you're interrupting normal business um, is exactly what the terrorists want. Um, it gives them notoriety. It gives them um, attention uh, within the media, right? That's what happened. The House had to stop because QAnon did a thing, right? Um, so, um, uh, sh uh, is that was it a proper response for the House to shut down? Um, should they have been thinking of their um, uh, their representatives, right? Because if something did happen, if something did happen, there would have been a lot of blame uh, going around. Well, why didn't you take the uh, the threat seriously? You know, you knew about the threat. It was reported in the media. Why didn't you do anything, right? Um, uh, yeah. But on the other uh, hand, you have to uh, uh, understand that uh, this threat, this QAnon, um, these uh, and this far right uh, terrorist threat isn't going to go away anytime soon, right? So there are going to be more threats in the future. Are we simply going to give in? And um, um, uh, of interrupt Congress and the and its important business, which it never actually does, um, every every single time. So uh, we'll try this again. What do you all think about this? Well, I completely agree with what someone said earlier. I think that we have the we have the National Guard there. They've already been treated real badly. I mean, why isn't that enough to make the the um, the House of Representatives feel com have felt comfortable to meet? That should I feel that should have been enough. Um, you know. Um, did someone post me the link to that in particular about like what the particular threats were that engaged in? So I think like, ultimately it just depend on the um the um the, the intelligence think... the intelligence field and like and what was the determined credibility of the action occurring. So I think it's like it's very much akin to like death threats against the president. You know, I think like, obviously about... pre... hold, hold on, hold on. But, like, if you sorry, if you have the link, just post me the link. You, know, you don't have to cut me off. Just post. Just hit me up with the link. No, I don't but have the like, link. It's kind of like the death threats against the president. You know, like this pre the president gets the fucking thousands of death threats every fucking day. Mm. You know, but and obviously they're not going to react to all of them. Mm. However, though, if there's a credible one where you know there's reason to believe, like, oh, okay, this guy, we have enough information to indicate this guy has a motive. He has the means. Um, we have otherwise indications that he is actively going to go to this place to engage in this act. Then yeah, then there is actionable um, reason to confront that issue. Mm -hmm. But like I think the important part of it is though is a lot of these like address, a lot of this um, addressing of the threat. In my personal opinion, ought to happen otherwise behind closed doors, especially like if there is an alteration to these individual schedules before that point that you made prime, in that showing that like it's it is otherwise affecting these people's ability to do their job, and it may otherwise motivate others to try to engage in that same action.
Well, here's one. Here's just one small note of the article that Prime put in the chat. It and I didn't know this. I thought the entirety of Congress suspended their activities. The House closed for a period of time, but the Senate continued in its activity. So it was an it was a decision on the side of the House to, for some reason, recess for some period of time. It wasn't a decision of Capitol Police to shut down the cap shut down the Capitol because the Senate was still in session and still was continuing on yeah. whatever they were doing two we, days we ago. Know that. So it, so it was like so then I don't so I'm bringing up the point to sort of for uh for Pug here in that. Mm. Like, I don't think that there was some sort of, like, credible threat that was, like, being made, and then Capitol Police made the decision that, like, they needed to close the Capitol. Because if they did, then the Senate would have also recessed. Yeah, Let I mean, me I... just say this. From what I've read, and I can share sources, the threat was about as credible as what the threat was on January 6th. So it was yeah, imminent, was... then? <laughs> Apparently it, yeah, it was there I think from, from the yeah. from the intelligence. Yeah. Well, they didn't have very good intelligence on January 6th, honestly. Mm -hmm. So it was about the same that they have now. Not very good. So they take it. They're taking it everything way more seriously. That's probably why they did it. But if they did, but I'm just still, I'm just, I'm just still confused of the like why the House of recess, but the Senate didn't. Like if it was because the, the House has way more men has so many more members. Like they probably like. No. Okay. Also... Well, that's like wild that's speculation. Yeah. I think they. They don't yeah, all, I mean, members, it's, it's all house speculate. members don't gather in the house chamber at once. Like that's not how it works. Go ahead. Right, uh, I, under, right I understand. I, I don't know honestly. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Stephen. This is like we're all speculating in the dark. Like yeah. our answers on this would be entirely informed by what we would see in an intelligence report, and we just don't have access to that information. It's entirely possible that there's a super credible threat. I'm pretty sure every single person in here would be like, "Yeah, they definitely should have called a recess or mm -hmm. taken the day off." Um, if the threat was like dumb or not very credible, then I think all of us would agree that they shouldn't have. But we're all just kind of speculating. Like we have no—I don't think anyone here, or unless someone here works in intelligence, but, we really know like what the threat was, right? But Stephen, um, uh, if maybe we all wouldn't agree. Um, because again, um, the House uh, took the recess and the Senate didn't. Um, so that's the case, right? Um, Wait, but who wouldn't agree? Like, so I'm curious. Let's say that there was a credible threat on members of the House and they actually felt like there was a decent chance that some kind of violence would be enacted. Is there someone in here that thinks that they should have still just called uh, their session and done their regular work? Well, okay, let's look at, let's examine this because um, while this is happening, right? Uh, the uh, capital is still hardened, right? So uh, after the uh, the previous capital riots, um, they put the massive uh, fencing uh, up. We have 5,000 uh, National Guard troops uh, stationed um, at the capital. Um, we have all these security measures there. Um, should we, right? Like, should we have actually um, uh, changed? Like, is that enough? Um, should that simply uh, uh, give the um, lawmakers confidence? Um, that this is enough because what else uh, can be done um, other than that? I mean the Senate seemed to have uh, Confidence that this was enough. This could, uh, could protect them. So yeah, maybe some people would disagree. Uh, Dr. Vane Yeah, so I just wanted to note this we could just probably just apply How Occam's you call him a doctor, but you wouldn't call me a doctor. Oh my god, because you're not a doctor Jugsy. You can call him a doctor. Oh god, Jugsy. He's a nursing doctor. Okay, don't worry. I'm on the way. Oh, on the so way. Uh, oh, you just don't Sorry, respect I just what I say, doctor. You can call me whatever you want to call okay. me. Okay, don't worry. I'll rename you. My name is a social construct. It doesn't kidding, matter. Go ahead. All right, so um, I think we can kind of apply Occam's razor to this. So apparently, uh, according, I don't very much believe what this woman has to say, but according to, you know, the House Speaker Pelosi, this was the GOP just having their, like, policy meeting that the DNC already had, but they did it on Zoom like normal people during a pandemic. They want to have theirs indoors, like how they are. I think that might be just it. The National Guard is there with like real capacity. They're not there for like show, like how it was during January. They're there like now with the capacity to actually hold back something that, frankly, for the activists that have been on the ground that kind of like keep an ear out for this kind of stuff, nothing was supposed to happen. Like this, this past, no, nothing was supposed to happen. Wait, like, how do we know that? What? There wasn't any chatter over it. There's nothing like, like, because here's the thing. Parlor was one of the greatest benefits to us who were doing also like uh, analysis on what the right wing is doing. 
because like if we're if we're trying to listen to like what our adversary because i'm on the left if we're trying to listen to, to what our adversaries are doing i'm in their spaces all the time i'm listening to what they say so like th this wasn't we didn't expect anything here but like in january yeah we all knew something was coming everybody knew sure, like if you did not, not everything so, is going to be done on like public social media right of like course. so if you so that, anybody so if you've ever worked an intelligence job before you get there's like daily reports that go out that like monitor yeah. threat levels of activity across Absolutely. the country For um, sure. and then if there is something going on that intelligence knows about this is why i'm saying like we're all this is just hard speculation like it might not have been anything public but there could have there could have been something we just don't know right mm. maybe yeah. maybe there maybe there was chatter on something where some guy messaged some dude and he's like yo like i left a pipe bomb under you know aocc like i think it's gonna go off there some crazy shit like that. we have no idea right like if it's something like that then you know who knows but I was like, thinking about fair, that like yeah but to be fair like uh, being, being someone who's previously who worked in, in naval intelligence for six years like mm -hmm. in, even in the pentagon for three like with those threat levels yeah you're, you're correct with those threat levels and like it would be something like yeah like i, I got stated before like it's something yeah they wouldn't like put out there they wouldn't suspect hey cnn guess what we just <laughs> yeah. found out's going on yeah. you know but like but to the certain degree though if they did find that substantial threat it would be enough to like e send both of these to get the house representatives and the senate out if it was deemed like credible to one of them like it would like, would it not seem to make sense, though? Like, it'd be enough for... Well, I, for well, I don't know. We don't know the location. For, I mean, of, for both of the houses to go, yeah. And I we don't, we don't know the time and location of the threat, right? That's what well, Yeah, sure. Well, sure, yeah. I understand, yeah. And I agree. Like, this is where we get into the speculation part, though. However, though, like... And, and yes, it is speculation, though. However, though, like, if there was the threat that was great enough, and if it was the team... If it was determined to be a valid threat, that it would be reasonable that both of the... Both of them, of the, the House and the Senate, would otherwise be forced to evacuate by just one just yeah it's possible but can i can we, if we were to there. if we if we were to like spend some time together with our imaginations we could probably conceive of some threats that might only affect one half of congress right we could probably be creative and think up of something i don't want to spin those theories off right now yeah. because i don't want to figure it out <laughs> it's in the same building right <laughs> We got I, believe it's different, I believe the Senate and the House are different chambers, aren't they? But it's the same building. They're in the same building. Yeah, same yeah. building. I, I, I mean, Jesse is correct that there could be possibly some kind of like hypothetical you could come up with where the Capitol Police can reasonably say the House needs to like not be there, but the Senate can still be there because of the specific threat. That's definitely possible. But um, but like again, yeah, it's just very very speculative of us. I mean, the enemy. I, mean, I, I guess I think the speculation then would be like, oh, like we're attributing the the House adjourning for this reason yeah rather than they just didn't they really actually they, have they to they never said they just, why they never yeah, said they just, why they, they adjourned they didn't and they have anything to do that yeah, didn't they have session that. till noon though they, they had session until yeah, noon and they then they and then the they they were there yeah it, yeah but this is also so this will be standard practice for like secure for um national security related stuff they're not going to come out and explicitly say like what threat there may or may not be like that'll just never happen even the dr puggle no one because i don't read them firsthand but like even on the little security briefings they don't release like in detail like this is why we think there's a threat here like it's a pretty vague pretty general thing like there's a lot of threats that come and go in the country that we'll never know the details of because it's on a need to know base and they don't want to like yeah. reveal like how they come across that information uh so th this is where i'll give jugsy some credit as well because he did mention that um, in the house, so obviously you have more members as well. You still have to, you have to deal basically if say, for example, if the house is still open, you have to deal with security of every one of those house members. And then you also have to make sure that every single one of their staffers, if they have visitors or something like that, like if Marjorie Taylor green is going to be giving fucking people, um, you know, uh, tours and stuff like that throughout the Capitol, uh, obviously you, you got to stop that. So I, I think that this being a temporary measure, I don't think it's all that unreasonable. I think, it, I think it's totally reasonable to basically say, Senate, you're fine, whatever, you can go in and you can have staffers and, and do your normal business. But the House, you're, you're just a little, maybe a little too much logistically to handle right now. That actually makes a lot of sense with 100 members in the Senate and 500 in the House and yes. thinking of, of each House member has 12 aides, et cetera. Yeah. So. Well, that's so, what I said initially. You actually just swayed well, me. Yeah. I imagine at that point, though, like, then, I don't know, like, this, this is a shoot from the hip kind of hot take, I guess. But that's what I'd imagine then, like, where, for the betterment of, like, public perception and whatnot, then the House should be more incentivized to release that threat to him than to explain why there is that distinguishment between between them having to um, go into a recess and be dismissed by the Senate. Because that was one of the um, reading, going through the articles that, Prime sent me as well as um, another, but I mean, there, there's really is bringing up is like is currently just as the perception alone of it, of the perception of this disarray and this like communication disconnect 
between these two groups is is forming an issue in itself. But I mean, there's rarely any benefit to that, right? Why would you let anybody know what you know when you know it? Yeah. Like yeah, if, they, if you have a certain there's certain because there's certain information it? you can release without because like to a certain degree when it comes to like the release of information, there's certain information that can be released that otherwise is fine. There's certain details. The details that we don't necessarily release, the details that are need to know, is basically things that may otherwise be indicative of how we obtain that information. Or like, there might for be example, like, like, like there for could example, be need- yeah, sorry. Oh, God, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I said, there could be need to know stuff, but it could be a second thing too, is that like, especially when you talk about canceling an event, you probably don't want to release the specific like requirements of what has to happen for an event to get canceled. So somebody might say, you know, we originally weren't going to cancel today, but we actually got four discrete different threats on, on one day. And that's, you know, that's our trip. Cause then people know in the future is like, all right, well, it just takes four phone calls and we can get Congress shut down every time. Right. So you, I'm just saying it's, you're in a really tricky spot when you release information like this is really, really hard to to figure out like what you can responsibly release without giving people basically like a, here's a guidebook to shutting down Congress in the future. Fair enough. Um, okay. So, uh, oh, oh, Joel, you want to say something? Um, yeah, I had a question for you, Prime. Okay. So, what were your worst outcomes of them doing this? So, I can I can understand the arguments like maybe they overdid it, but you said earlier like um, you might be giving these people what they want by doing this. But it seems like this group was driven by this online conspiracy theory. They weren't just deciding to cause chaos because this was a very specific thing on this specific day. So, what were your like worst outcomes of this? So, um. I wasn't actually giving a prescription as to what should be done because I'm not exactly sure myself. Um, okay. But um, worse outcomes, uh, again, I don't know uh, the exact threat, but um, I, what I wanted to go off of um, is uh, what are the possibilities like uh, for the future? So um, this, the article that I linked was uh, written by an Israeli. Um, at the very end, uh, they talk about like uh, rocket attacks uh, from Hamas, apparently, um, and how... Uh, uh, Israelis like don't let that interrupt their uh, lives um, because they just they feel like they just can't. Um, they have to keep going. All right. Um, so what, what I'm concerned about is what our daily lives look like afterwards, right? Um, because and I said this again, and it's, I'm sorry if you guys were here uh, from the beginning, but I'm going to have to repeat all this. But uh, 9/11 um, had a specific response uh, here in the states, right? Um, we saw the uh, rise of the Patriot Act. Uh, we saw um, uh, uh, the extreme um, uh, powers that were given to our intelligence and our security uh, agencies. Um, we have these uh, the security apparatus now surrounding uh, the Capitol. Um, but when is it going to go away? When when is that going to be dismantled? Is that going to be a permanent feature here? Right? I think it's something we have to discuss. Like as a democracy, is this something we're going to accept? Um, Maybe it is. Maybe uh, it's a sacrifice, and the sacrifice will make um, uh, even less access to our capital from now on. It might be a worthwhile sacrifice, but it's something we really have to talk about. I think. Um, well, one. Um, and uh, also, uh, uh, Stephen, I'm hearing like myself from you. You're echoing. Yeah, you're echoing. Oh, sorry, Clark. No problem. Um, I could. I was gonna make a point. Okay. Well, hold on. Uh, well, the point is. The point is. is um, what what do you all uh believe uh is is this is this worth it like the path they might be going down because again we're hearing people we're hearing noise uh from the security intelligence agencies right saying that we need more powers like despite everything we had gotten during the patriot act right um and, and that period of time in the u.s despite all the latitude we have and we still have right that just hasn't been like repealed yet um despite all that we might need more right to keep the country safe it's, it's got to happen so how do we respond to that um, is that is it a worthwhile trade-off to be um, uh, to giving them any more power, or do they have enough tools in the bag uh, already? What do y'all think? I don't know. Uh, it's, do you want safety or privacy? That's yeah, effectively what you're asking. Well, so I think it's a little more complicated because it's like well, but is it though? Well, uh, because yeah. like as a, as an individual citizen, I think it's a little simpler. Like, yeah, okay, I want my privacy. But when we're talking to when we're talking about the security of like the Senate and the House and the members of our government who are, uh, let's just face it, these are more important than me or you. These are people who are just objectively more important in the chain of command, et cetera. Um, I think it's a little more important to have these people well defended. Um, I, I, like I'm reading in the article uh, and, and they're talking about how like they they should have they should have uh uh 
continued to have the Congress or the House rather um, do its normal business. Um, and I, I actually agree with that. Like with all the with all the security, if it takes another two thousand, three thousand, ten thousand national security guards or uh, uh, security uh, personnel to protect and make sure that every single one of the staffers and the congressmen, et cetera, are getting to uh, where they need to go on time and safely, then I think that's worth it. Uh, but I, I agree with Well, that. And, it sounds like Prime wasn't necessarily talking security in the sense of oh. personnel. It's not like it was being referenced more into like intelligence collection as in like the Patriot Act, for example. Like that's, the Patriot Act wasn't about like, necessarily about like, oh, we're just gonna put in more fucking people at the airports. It was, hey, we're gonna fucking listen in to people's fucking cell phone calls and start was actively it? doing more more broader intel collection, think, not only on not more well, not only more free access intel collection on foreigners, but also on US citizens for otherwise could, more gray area general claims to justify I, those um, I think Prime was sort um, of more like we're referencing points. sort of like escalation of like sort of like the rationale of like, oh, we needed the Patriot Act because of this. I don't think he was sort of like alluding that we were gonna get like so, more intelligence okay. apparatus because of like because of January 6th, I think he was sort of talking about, like, will the security around the Capitol be like, we need this now, and it's going to have to be permanent because of January 6th. That, I think, he was the, the, he was making a parallel. He wasn't sort of oh. saying that we're going to get Patriot Act 2.0. I, I mean, I have a feeling that it will, it, will, it will correspond to whatever the threat level that the intelligence organizations, et cetera, whoever's monitoring this, uh, thinks that it, it, should, it needs to be. I mean, I kind of trust these, or maybe I'm really naive for that but i kind of trust these organizations to uh protect the the cap the capital except for i guess january 6th uh is the exception to that but i i do kind of trust them to uh sorry to to know what they're doing which then calls into question i think the problem with this whole thing is that uh, and i said this at the very beginning of this like i think the problem is that it's it was sending mixed signals like that the house was doing one thing and the senate was doing another although the logistical reason that was brought up earlier is a reason that that could definitely convince me although we we, we just don't know because wild speculation as steven said earlier I, I think basically the, the way that the security apparatus works right now, you know, the, between the NSA and all the other intelligence agencies, every, all their measures are already so intrusive. Um, you, you don't even really need to escalate that much to be able to cover a lot of your bases. Um, and if you're, if you're talking about just straight physical presence and obstruction um, in DC, I, I mean, I used to work two blocks from the White House. I, I have a lot of experience with Capitol Police. And, you know, they're, they're already, um, you know, very, very high on themselves. Uh, and and they, are, they already do a very good job of keeping everybody away from certain things. And especially, you know, the White House in particular. Um, the White House, uh, you know, has been marked off in, in these huge uh, regions for, for quite a while. So if you ever go to like the front of the White House, you weren't you weren't even able to see like or like walk up to the gate like <clears throat> they have people push back like i don't know 100 yards or something all the way back to the street for quite a while um it's just it, it's the norm there um if that becomes the norm with the capital um i i'm i think that you know just generally a loss because before you you could at least you know tour the capital and it was nice and stuff like that but i don't i don't think it's that big of a deal it, just from a, a physical presence perspective yep. i uh, the, agree the, i think that I think the cap the Capitol Police is needs to be strengthened. I think they need to be more of a protective force, like the Secret Service is to the president, and less of a TSA like branch. Uh, Gort, you want to? I mean, I think you want to say something, Sardas. Oh, um, I was just going to say there's already such a huge presence within the D.C. area of the Capitol Police and of the Secret. Uh, Secret Service. Um, I don't really see more presence around the Capitol making a huge difference in the environment in the city, just as somebody who's like from that area and has worked in that area as well. So, so let me try to take this from a different angle. Um, all right. So we have President uh, Biden um, and uh, the bravery of establishment Democrats in the face of 
of threats has not been great, right? Like they haven't had like a great track record. We could see that literally after 9-11, right? Um, and who voted for what, right? Who voted to give these powers? Um, um, who voted to uh, uh, have these foreign wars that we're still embroiled in right now, right? Um, so do you think that a President Biden uh, would fight uh, for these, um, uh, would fight for our civil liberties, right? Well, he would take a stand here. Um, I'm really curious yeah. about that. And especially because like, honestly, like <laughs> people keep saying this man is uh, the uh, most uh, progressive since FDR. He hasn't been fucking showing it. He's been retreating on all his campaign promises, right? Um, as we can see. Um, so do you think that this is where he would take a stand? Wait, what's Biden retreated on? What? Okay. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Oh, you don't agree with that? Are you Be sure? careful. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, where's his muscle behind fifteen dollars minimum wage? What the fuck is he supposed to do? What the fuck? Okay. Oh my god. Well, right. I, well, I, there I, we go. I agree. Can use, there we go. Can use okay. the that, that was oh a god. bad example. For no, 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 no. I actually, no, it's a, bread, so. no, it's a perfect fucking so example. Oh so no, we can do this. No, we can do it. Um, okay. fifteen dollars uh, uh, an hour minimum wage. Where, yeah, where's the muscle? What, what can he do? Yes, he has the bully pulpit, right? Like, um, uh. uh Biden, I feel like what's, what we've seen here uh, with Biden is the same thing we, we saw with Obama, right? Um, can't uh, figure out how to fight. Can't figure out how to uh, place pressure onto uh, uh, senators or to congressmen, right? Uh, when it's a progressive issue, when it's something that's going to help the people, right? Um, uh, we, uh, what, as the president, right, what he could do, he could go to West Virginia. He could go to um, uh, these other states, all right, where uh, we have these um, uh, Democrats who've uh, voted against the $15 an hour minimum wage, and we could, he could let all their constituents know, this is what uh, your uh, senator has done. This is what your elected representative has been doing, right? He could actually put out that support. Um, so, I don't think he agrees with the $15 minimum wage. I don't think he does yeah, either. I don't, the economy, I don't think he does I don't agree, either. I don't agree with the $15 an hour minimum wage, but regardless of whether I agree with that, I think Democrats, if they could pass it, they should, because it's amazing fucking optics. Even if it's a dog shit econ policy, yeah. people would like it enough that they yep. would support well, the party. I, I worry the about is, that, how that would affect small businesses with how bad this oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, regardless of that, Biden can't... Here, the reality mm. is, is that you're holding on to a razor-thin mm. Senate, mm. okay? We've got 50 fucking votes in the Senate. Yeah. The idea that we're going to expend political political capital trying to dig into people that we are like barely have a majority on that we're split even on and we're relying on the vice president for a tiebreaker broke oh that's just not so, happening so here's, you want here's a 15 my... an hour minimum wage the time for that was in the was in the election last year here... that was it we don't have enough in the senate we're not getting it, that's here... it. no that's i mean hold on, hold on no no yeah. uh, enough of the senate so we'd, we'd have I to have eight, we'd have to have so were there... against it yeah there were eight uh, like go ahead, and so, one start us go ahead Democrats. No, there was eight. Yeah. I believe there was eight Democrats yeah, who voted against it. Eight eight Democrats. Yeah, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so we would have. So, so hold on, one, one second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, uh, we would have to have um eight more senators, right? Beyond that, what we already have, um, to make this happen, right? If we can't, if Biden cannot uh, get his caucus together, right, for these priorities, he said it was important to him. He said, "Oh yes, fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage." That's the one thing he was he threw to Bernie Sanders, right? We're not uh, just talking about a fifteen an hour minimum wage. Though. If you want to fight for fifteen hour minimum wage, we can do that down the line. Right now, you're talking about holding up a one point nine trillion dollar coronavirus relief fund to try to get fifteen an hour minimum wage tacked on on a really hacky like uh, budget consolidation measure. Like this is not like the normal way that you would try to pass some major legislation like this number one and then number two even if you could again we're saying that there's eight senators now you need eight more maybe you don't maybe you need five more and you could get three to flip on it maybe you need like four more and you could get four to flip on it sure. but right now when you're holding on to the senate with barely 50 fucking dams with the skin of their teeth in there there is no fucking way that you're going to sneak a 15 an hour minimum wage one of the largest minimum wage hikes in u.s history onto onto a bill like that where it doesn't even belong there. so it's never okay happened. there's no way all, this is, ever first happening. of all i am the largest. I, 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 so happy that you you admit that uh, senators can flip. You can uh, actually apply pressure, and you can get people to flip. Okay, so now that we established that, that's good. Now we can move forward. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, the reason why um, it was so important to um, uh, uh, put this into um, the bill is because it's a must-pass bill, right? This is something that can't be dropped, right? Biden's not so, so not going to allow it to be dropped. His presidency presidency relies on this passing. Okay, so um, if this was a priority, he he'd, he'd have fought for it here. But okay, let's say let's say uh, you're right, Stephen. That um, it doesn't make sense uh, to to do it now, right? Like, don't hold it up. We need to get these checks out immediately. We don't have time for these games. Okay, great. Then what's his game plan? 
uh, uh, what's the next step uh, uh, for President Biden? So, but, so um, we've heard um, uh, that it's not going to be uh, within this uh, bill. Looks like that's not going to be the case. The so, the we so we have to work on bipartisan issues that are extremely popular across all of the United States. That's all we can do right now. Because if you wanted to do more, we needed more seats in the Senate. We don't have additional seats in the Senate, so we don't get to do that now. Hold That's on, it. Hold it's on. Over. First That's of all, it. it's already, it's it's already locked. Raising the minimum wage is a bipartisan issue. Like you'll get you'll get support from that. Raising the minimum wage to something like twelve dollars an hour might be, or maybe eleven dollars. Fifteen an hour minimum wage hike is not a bipartisan agreement. No, like, oh, not you at might all. be that it's that's so fucking high. People like, and I understand that people are still lost on like in coastal cities that they don't know that fifteen an hour is just an unbelievable fucking high wage but you do not have bipartisan support across the entire country for a 15 hour minimum wage yeah you're completely right like west virginia's yeah. economy no, no, just... if you look at west virginia we, joe manchin we... if he isn't joe manchin democrats don't have a seat in west virginia whatsoever west virginia is republican joe manchin being such a blue dog democrat that all of us here are very disappointed with that's the only reason we even have a chance in the senate to get oh, any okay. change done okay. for people okay. right so now i love this i love this basically you're saying all right well why don't we make a mansion the president because at this point right well we have such a uh, thin majority right and we can't uh certainly put pressure on them right well, well joe manchin wants uh, uh joe manchin gets at that point at that point why why do we even first of all, first of all fucking Here, have... okay so let me explain Right. Explain what the frustration is, okay? You're really upset that we live in a democracy. That's what this comes down to. You're <laughs> oh, really fucking mad that you can't just take your That's agenda not, and yeah, that's exactly that. what's going on. I did no, not no, see hold that. on. Because progressives need to understand this, and they don't for whatever reason, okay? What the progressives are very mad about right now is that they live in a democratic system. What they really want to do is they want to find some way to take authoritarian control of the government. So whether that means expanding the fucking <laughs> Supreme Court or whether that means finding some way to, to overrule some bullshit in, in parliamentary or find some way to get the CBO to rule something or find some way to blah, blah, blah. Like everybody wants to try to do something that they just don't have the democratic okay, support. Okay, so to do. no, no. If you wanted an ambitious agenda. You need more than fifty senators Holy shit, in the no. Senate. First of all, yeah, you want first. don't worry. I, 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 I promise, I'll let you all in. I promise, I'll let you on. I promise, promise, I promise, I will let you all in because I want to hear what you all have to say on this. I promise, I promise. Um, I just gotta uh, yell at Stephen here for a little bit um, because he's fucking wrong. Um, first of all, um, putting uh, uh, words and intentions in my mouth um, uh, that I did not state. Right. So uh, yes, uh, we want to take over. No, I'm at all I'm asking. All all I said is that Biden is dropping his campaign promises. That's all I did, right? I didn't say anything about that. Biden's I didn't campaign say, promise I didn't wasn't, say, I, didn't I am going to he, sneak in 15 hour minimum say, wage into a coronavirus say, I relief didn't say, I didn't say that. I didn't say that one, that he would absolutely succeed, even if he did everything that I want him to do, that he would succeed. I didn't say anything about that, right? I didn't say that he has the power to do this alone because he doesn't have the power to do this alone. Uh, we have separated powers in this country. Great. Um, so I didn't say any of that. And I didn't uh, imply that I wanted that, that like I wanted to just simply push my progressive agenda on everyone else, right? Okay, all I'm asking for and all I'm saying is that I need to see him actually fighting for these things because I don't see that at all. I don't see it at all. Yeah, uh, because, you don't, seeing, because you don't want to see I'm any seeing, fight. What you want to see is you want to see some weird authoritarian shit where they no, just steamroll again, through Congress. So that's a nice strong man perfect another straw man uh coming okay, wait, out so of let's, the destiny wait, let's, factory let's like super simply then let's Sorry. just follow it out okay right. you tell me what you think you can do and i will tell you every reason why it's impossibly ne like it's never gonna work go ahead let's start from the very top go okay all right um we're putting we're putting pressure on these senators centers right so okay so you want to put pressure on somebody like mansion the last time a progressive ran in west virginia to show that oh progressives could actually win there they got like 34 percent of the fucking vote they got fucking obliterated i didn't, I, I didn't ask so, for that i didn't ask for that sure so no, okay so number that. one that's not so what i asked for they, that's not what I said. Okay, you said pressure on senators. So Mansion is out. You're not putting I pressure on him. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Um, you didn't even ask me what kind of pressure I'm talking about. Right. So once again. It doesn't matter what kind of pressure. Holy he knows shit. that he's not Holy losing that seat okay. to another Democrat. Well, if you're actually going to listen to me, right? So it's like throwing up these straw men, one after another, right? I'll knock them all down. Go Don't ahead. Worry. All right, okay. go ahead. Okay, sure. You can actually put pressure on them, right? Just, just like. Uh, um, How? Uh, Okay, literally, I'm trying to tell you. Um, okay. You can go to his state, right? You can let his constituents know. You can have a full court press, letting them, uh, uh, letting his constituents understand exactly what he did, right? And let them be the judge of this, right? Uh, see, they them, already see, are. They voted him in. See, He's oh, a moderate. Oh, okay. They already on, voted on, for. Oh, oh, so that, is that how American democracy works? That's how. Yes. Right. So yes. we both. Yes, we that both, is how it works. We vote <laughs> them in, and then that's it, right? That's it. That's uh, there's no activism. The problem, there's Prime, no activism. What you think is there, what you think. No, 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 no. You're gonna keep. 
you're telling I'm me what I'm thinking. You're wrong. To tell you. No, no, you're delusional. <laughs> you're what you think can happen is we can go to West Virginia and say, hey, listen, you oh, Dems boy. over here, you're the same as the Dems in AOC's district, right? Nope. Don't you guys really I, want all these super progressive policies? And you know what the people uh, in West Virginia look at and go, you're fucking crazy. Mansion is our blue dog audience boy. Audience We're not members. fucking going for some crazy Didn't progressive Kamala Gent Harris literally go to his state? Gentle audience members. And pressured him that way? That's exactly what she did. Gentle audience member uh, members. Uh, notice how Destiny refuses to actually deal with the points that I'm putting up, right? And keeps uh, 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 giving me intentions, right? Uh, putting intentions on me that I have not stated at all. Okay, try it again. Great. So, um, as Dr. Vane uh, uh, conveniently pointed out, yes, this actually has been done before. This is a viable strategy. You can do this um, if you uh, think if that specific issue is a priority. You don't do this on every issue, just in the things that you uh, consider to be a priority, right? So, okay, um, uh, as we understand in the in American democracy, um, uh, uh, participation doesn't just stop at the ballot box, right? It's not a one-time thing. Uh, if you if you simply um, uh, put, uh, go and vote and then that's it, right? Well, then you're, you're missing out on, on the rest, right? Because your elected representatives, they take actions, right? Uh, and they are susceptible to pressure because they want power. They want to keep their power. Certainly, Joe fucking Manchin wants to keep his power, right? So, uh, if you could rally citizens, letting them know um, that he's taking this action, which is against your interests, especially West Virginia, such a poor state, right? Um, uh, that so many workers would be in support of. Let them know. Then they could actually, well, look, they can call his office, right? They can send letters. They can do all these things, right? Put pressure on their senator uh, for this. But that's not the only thing that can be done. Because that's the stick. There's also the carrot, right? You can offer Joe Manchin something, right? Like, um... This can either go with me um, going into your state and doing everything that I just said, or going into your state with you arm in arm um, in front of a factory, right? Like, look at this factory. Joe Manchin came into my office. No oh boy, he demanded, he demanded that uh, this factory go up for the good people of West Virginia. And here, here it is. I, I said, okay, okay, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, Joe Manchin. Like, um, I, I hear you, buddy. I'm gonna make this happen. And so, a uh, Biden and Joe Manchin standing in front of a. Uh, a uh, some sort of project that uh, benefits the people of that state. That can happen. That that's how business gets done in Washington, right? Uh, I want something. You want something. Let's make a deal. I'm not seeing that happen right now. You can you can respond. I, mean, right like I, I like everything you said is like really cool, but it's just like I'm sorry, but like you're not going. Pressure exists on a political level when mm. somebody thinks they're going to lose a seat. That's where pressure comes from. Manchin is not getting fucking primaried by a more progressive Dem. If Manchin loses his seat, he's going to lose it to a Republican. So Manchin knows because he's not an idiot, and Biden knows because he's not an idiot, then people aren't about to fucking bully Manchin out of his seat. Because we would rather have a 50th Dem that is incredibly moderate or blue dog in that seat than having a 51st Republican. It literally doesn't like, have to be – it literally doesn't I, have to be a person who's more progressive. I, it, like That's like not even – it can be another establishment because, first of all, other establishment Democrats voted for um uh the fifteen dollars uh, minimum wage and they're not all progressive right we can understand that all the people who voted for that aren't all progressive so it doesn't take a progressive to realize that fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage is something that's helpful it's something that people want right so Prime, great. he's he's so, been here but so, great. so, once, he's we, so once we understand so once we understand that once we understand that we can know that literally anyone else can primary him like if that's <clears> what you're talking about yes anyone else can primary him but again uh there's uh sticks and there's carrots you can offer him something it doesn't all have to be like a threatening your seat it's another option there are many tools within the tool bag as a president that you can um uh, uh use uh for this very uh, uh for this very moment but i'm gonna let other people in um right now but go ahead so a lot of you want to jump in he He's like he's been say, in office for less than two months, and you're already trying it, like you already expect for him to deliver on one of his biggest. No, I didn't say classes. that. I didn't say that. Well, no. I didn't say that. Yeah. Like, I didn't say that. Is, like, yeah, Manchin, I said, you know, like, I'm reading. I'm reading articles like directly relating to the Kamala Harris and Manchin relationship, and uh, it's uh, tenuous at best of whether or not they'll fucking like be in line on fucking anything. And like the premise that's being proposed here, like why, I, I, like while you can push your voters and maybe like using your voters to peer pressure you to change your policies, may work. But but at the same time, it ultimately still goes into like Destiny's point of the voters are still voting for him. And now like even if hypothetically in that scenario where you do have a candidate where they happen to do like fifty minimum wage, but would that not be indicative that there's probably some other policy that we ultimately otherwise disagree with? as well that we're going to want to push next like for example like we'll get the we'll get the blue dog dem that's for the 50 dollar minimum wage but then oh shit 
They're against healthcare. So now we got to wait fucking Hold on. six years to get the other no, guy dude, in now. Dude, and that's a dude, far longer dude. process. Dude, are you serious? Are you serious now? Right now? Kind of. Yeah. No, like seriously, like that's the point is right. Like like uh uh, uh Stephen uh, mentioned right. The the point is to actually put pressure on them right. So like what the other guy may or may not do is not actually important right. It's just that um are you in uh. Uh, do you think that you could lose your seat, right? So someone else can uh, primary them. So it's whatever, right? I'm not like, it's not, we're, we're waiting for this other person, right? The point is to put up a credible threat against uh, Joe Manchin and his uh, power. That's the point, right? So no, we're not like imagining what the next person will do, right? Um, uh, well, Hopefully um, someone would, I would love for someone to fucking primary this guy, right? But again, it doesn't literally have to be someone who is a, uh, a raging progressive, like I would love, right? It doesn't have to be that person. It just has to threaten his seat. He doesn't give a shit who who, who uh, replaces him. He doesn't give a shit about any of that. He wants to- Wait, can I ask you one power, quick, easy but, question? Okay. If he thought that 15 an hour minimum wage was important to his constituents, why wouldn't he just support it? Oh, because first of all, uh, Joe Manchin has a business there in uh, uh, West Virginia, right? Uh, where he's paying his workers, I believe, as I, as I understand, 10 cents over uh, the uh, minimum wage himself, right? So this would actually directly affect his own pocket. That would, this, like, raising minimum wage directly. He, he doesn't personally have the business, just to be clear. I mean, you're basically right, but, like, he, he doesn't own the business personally. It's, like, he has ties to, I think, a couple of businesses. So he's invested in those businesses, correct? Right, right, okay. right. right. Yeah. So he's invested just, in those you businesses. Any... It's a conflict so, of interest. So, yes. So he's invested in those businesses. So he himself um, uh, would be losing money um, if that was the case, right? If uh, more money went to labor costs. So um, he has a vested interest in not uh, uh, changing things right there. Um, and beyond that... Uh, <sighs> Money and politics, which I haven't forgotten. We're going to have that fight later on. But money and politics, yes. Um, his donors, are, are, I'm guessing, weren't going to be uh, too excited about this either. We can look up who his donors are. But um, I'm sure if we go down the list, I'm not sure uh, they'd be too, uh, super excited. I'm raising their labor costs either. But West Virginia in general, I'm from a small coal town. That entire state is decimated coal towns. A $15 minimum wage would economically be devastating for these people, and they are allergic to that policy. So that line of thinking wouldn't exactly no, work No, uh, actually, we had, so, um, sorry, uh, polling. Sorry. Uh, I mean, I want to go back to something you said earlier. You said something about, like, pressuring for important things. We had, like, the Voterama today, we had a 10-hour delay on that because we were trying to get Democrats to be on the same page, right? That's, like, something that happened today. So we're, we're trying to push for important issues in this COVID bill. Again, this, this $2 trillion COVID bill. Attaching the $15 minimum wage is not going to happen. That's just, like, not going to happen in this COVID bill. So, if we, we, we spent 10 hours today trying to get uh, unemployment insurance, right, UI stuff, to, to, to be across these eight Democrats, we're not getting a $15 minimum wage. That's just not happening. Okay. You know what would have been a good move? If they had instead pushed for, like, checks monthly, either retroactively or happening, like, now till the end of the pandemic. So, like, give I us something they did, that is secure. That happened, they did do a retroactive... They I think they retroactively... They literally taxes. cut how many people could get it. They literally cut how many people could oh, get it. So the idea that Joe Manchin like, wants well, to I, th I thought, didn't they retroactively forgive taxes on, um, on prior uh, unemployment disbursements through 2020? No. What? No, the, 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 it's going to be the it's going to be the unemployment for for this this year up to ten thousand dollars can be um can be will be like not taxed for this year. So the UI going out for after this bill is the is the part that my, my understanding was that they made it retroactive through twenty twenty that I think it was up to yeah. ten thousand dollars and unemployment insurance benefits would be non taxable. Maybe, yeah, maybe but he, now here's my question then. How many well, people who are in a financially like dire situation even know how to like implement those taxes? Like those taxes. Well, you don't have to like, implement it. You just, you're not going to owe them at the end of the year. You don't have to pay taxes on it. You don't have to implement it. You just do your taxes or pay somebody to do taxes or whatever. H&R Block. Sponsor me, H&R. Turbo tax. You just do your turbo tax. <laughs> And all the while, I'm here fucking paying a thousand bucks back to the government. Um, right. Why do you think sorry. that Manchin would want to save some employees and some businesses that he's invested in instead of like winning his seat again? You think that's more important to him? S sorry, save some employees? What do you mean? So you're saying that like he's going to, so we're on, so we're full on the conspiracy train now. So you're saying uh, that he's invested uh, <laughs> in some businesses that hire some employees that are working at below what the new minimum wage would be. And you're saying that he's willing to throw all of his constituents under the bus and risk his election because of his investment ties to these businesses? These guys are worth like $7 million. First of all, so uh, I am, I'm thinking, uh, I know watching uh, his behavior of 
our politicians in general that uh, when it comes to their own personal interests, uh, that is first and foremost. So when it comes to maintaining their power, um, that is the most important thing. How do they maintain their power? Well, uh, we have these amazing, uh, wonderful donors uh, who uh, fill our uh, campaign. Uh, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. When we say maintain their power, that's a good thing. We want politicians to maintain their political power. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of- No, 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 by, yes. by, by oh, oh, sorry, maintain their power, sorry. I mean, maintain their seats. Sorry, that's uh, specific yeah, That's what seats. we want them to do. That's not what politicians should be doing. Not, yes, absolutely. Not, that is literally if they're the, not actually, I, if they're not actually- Fundamentally disagree with that. If they're not that. actually You're completing wrong. the work yeah, of the people, then no. democracy. If they're not actually completing the work of the people, then no, I don't want them there. No, simply them being there, something like fucking Nancy Pelosi or whatever the fuck, right? Um, being there for years on end, right? Um, if they were actually one of the most effective leaders we have in the house. If they're True. actually, if they're actually, well, mm, okay, so uh, hold on. the Senate I, majority let's matters, not get, though. Let's so. not get distracted by that. That's a completely different conversation. Sorry, um, I, but I, like my point I, is, I, I, I go to you. I go to you next, uh, uh, Stardust. I will go to you next. Um, um, the point is, is not simply for them to be there, to exist. No, the point of them is actually accomplish the, uh, uh, the goal of the people, to uh, represent the constituent, uh, constituent uh, uh, to the best of their ability. If they're not doing that, they can fuck off. I don't need them there. You don't need them there. Um, but we will get, we can get back into this. Uh, sec, uh, Stardust, Stardust, okay. Stardust, please. Yeah, I just wanted to add something um, that might, might kind of play into why he didn't vote for this is, uh, it says um, about 50% of West Virginia employees are employed by small businesses. So I imagine that a $15 uh, minimum wage hike would uh, negatively affect uh, that group of people. Um, uh, I mean, it's just speculation, obviously, but... Um, it would. Yeah, so um, that's just what I, yeah. An eleven dollar minimum wage is much more popular, and that's what Manchin wants. He wants True. an eleven dollar minimum wage increase, much more popular. I think it's fifteen points more popular in West Virginia, um, and among every Democratic voter and Republican voter. So, so that is the policy right so now. That's understand. the non-virtue signal position. So yeah, yeah the average yeah. the average uh, worker, or at least fifty percent of the average workers in West Virginia, would be negatively affected by the fifteen dollar. Uh, minimum wage hike so of course he wouldn't vote for it um actually so first of all the 50 percent. so 50 percent. first of all you're just assuming that that would uh um you would lose all jobs uh there we've seen uh hikes in minimum wages. i'm not saying i didn't no, say anything you, about losing said, jobs well you said yeah. negatively affected what do you mean by negatively affected then um they would get less hours things like that it's a mixture of things right okay so um uh we've seen uh uh hikes in the uh, minimum wage right in other states right um and we've seen um like even localities like next to each other across the border right we've seen the results of these things i'll have to pull this up um but um we've seen studies of these uh, do results into, uh, we, do they take into account small businesses yes yes all businesses yes looking okay. at all businesses right. right and seeing that there okay. isn't this massive uh, uh uh loss of jobs that's always used to scare people when it comes okay, to this is not just real, real to... quick on this. And we're gonna go, this is brought up so many times, okay? okay? Sure. People always try to say that like, oh, uh, this is brought, uh, minimum wage has been increased over and over and over again. And it hasn't increased. That's very true. And it hasn't led to a, a massive amount of unemployment. That is very true. Mm -hmm. But the minimum wage hike that we're talking about right now is way fucking higher. So, and if you read the, the next sentence on every economist that will ever tell so, you like, oh yeah, minimum wage doesn't seem to increase unemployment. The, the next sentence will always be, that's probably because the minimum wage is set to what the natural price flow would regularly be for wages. That's always is, the next sentence. Is that sentence. what it is? I'm not exactly sure yes. that it is. What is, what, first what what is, is like, Naturally, yeah. I mean. I don't, I, I, first of all, naturally, like, as if market <laughs> forces were left on their own, they'd probably settle up pretty close. To Hold what on, the first of all, I, I would love to see proof of that. For, I would love right now. To you see can Google if you want. Can you link Google, this Google, studies please. you were talking about? Okay, Prime. Right, okay, right now, if you want, just Google like IGM 15 an hour minimum wage and see what like most economists think about it. It's probably super mixed opinions, like that. It's oh. probably gonna be split down the middle whether people think it's good or bad. Oh, yeah, and exactly. look at the Seattle okay. 15 so hour minimum wage. So we can admit that. So we can admit that there's a mixed opinion on that. Okay, so like, okay, so we've gotten that far. Great, we're making progress here. Um, but beyond that, um, uh, sorry, uh, beyond that, no, I fucking, I fucking forgot my point. I'll, it'll come back to me, it'll come back to me, sorry. Um, Look, go ahead, uh, Dr. Bain, I'll get back to it. So if we wanna talk about like progressive labor policy, like we need to be talking about, like Biden's a union guy, right? He's supporting the Amazon thing. We should be leaning on him on that. We should be like, hey, you like the Amazon union? L let's do it, let's, you know? That we got comrades up in Seattle who are taxing Amazon. We got comrades over here in Burbank who are about to start taxing Amazon. Like, New York is already, like, there's this kind of stuff happening. We can push in those areas. I, like, exactly. if, if West Virginia wants to do West Virginia, this is a great opportunity for us 
to have the four years to criticize the liberal project and to shit on Joe Manchin and then primary the fuck out of him. Beat him if we can do so. But now here's my next question. How many of y'all are going to show up to phone bank? How many of y'all are going to show up to actually do the work? Because that's the issue. Is that like... It, it sucks because Democrats are shit. But at the same time, they're not the GOP who actually wants to completely disenfranchise us or at least unpopular, people like me, right? Unpopular <laughs> opinion. So like Joe Manchin, um, he is sort of a necessity for West Virginia. Those demographics I don't think are changing soon. But if you want to look at races, we can mm -hmm. flip. Delaware is a very progressive state that has really, really, really conservative Democrats, which are basically only there because they've been there for a long time. Those are seats we can realistically um, attack. And I love the idea of fo focusing on labor, real political power. Like, that's what we should be pounding in right now. We can't do much. It's already set. The government's set right now. We're going to push for as much change we can to help people right now. Like, my political model is, you know, push for the ideal and work pragmatically on our way there. And that's what we got to do. We need to so, understand, at least from my perspective, real quick, I, I see we have four years to prevent a repeat of 100 years ago, right? Like we're in Weimar Republic times. So two it's like, years. We're, yeah, we're real close. 100%. We're real close. So I'm, so I'm getting my passport ready because I might need a dip. But at the same time, like we have a window of opportunity to like, we were talking about domestic terrorism. Um, we can de-radicalize. There was a lot of that actually happening under Obama, where he was like actively, there was a task force that as soon as Trump got in, he immediately disbanded it, which was entirely for the purpose of de-radicalizing people, getting them exposure to brown people, getting them to understand that we're not scary, right? And then on top of it, like we could be having a better conversation about like what is actually happening at the border and what is actually happening with our foreign policy because we need for people to make the connection that the reason for why we have the status quo standard of living here in the United States is because we run an empire in Latin America and those people are suffering from it and they're coming here because this is where the money we extracted is. That it's their money that we stole. So that's why they're obviously gonna come here. As a result, we need to be educating people. We need to stop like shitting on them kind of, but they deserve to be shit on like when they're like extreme Nazis. But you know, you get what I mean. So real quick, we can do to, better. To the Destiny yeah. point um, from before. So I linked to uh, Young Turks article that basically talked about um, Joe Manchin and his ties to uh, La Quinta. And basically there was a, an analysis that was done that basically says pretty much all of the employees that work for that company are already making around $11 an hour. Um, so basically if you, if you do the math, um, a support for an eleven dollar an eleven dollar an hour minimum wage would basically mean nothing to him. Um, so that's that's well, basically that's what we're true. talking about. Well, the, well, that that's that's basically making the floor right. So nobody can make less than that. So it, it basically is just saying you're not going to be able to to fall below that. Dr granted, you're probably going to um, uh, have an inflation of wages at, at some point over time. Um, but again, this is this is essentially the norm for him. So that's that's probably a large reason why he's okay with it. So, I guess with that, like, if you sit like um, with with the case of like eleven dollars an hour minimum wage, like, and he he has a company or he owns stock in a company, whatever the whole situation there is, like, if they raise the minimum wage to eleven dollars an hour, and he has those people working for eleven dollars an hour, they're gonna have to raise the wage on those people too, because if they're working a certain job and then it's harder than another job that's now like making that same amount, they're going to have to like, those people are going to leave like that. And I, that's like, I guess an argument against $15 an hour wage to some extent, but really I, I guess the main thing I wanted to say was like, if we want to convince him to support this, like we have options that I don't know if they were attempted but like we could subsidize companies like like we could send money to West Virginia like that could just be part of this bill like to West Virginia like he could he could fight for that like he could like actually support things like that um we could extend the length of time for rural states to like actually get to this $15 an hour uh we could change the formula like it doesn't have to be over 5 years like for every single state like it doesn't have to be the same for everywhere like it can be like more of like an actual formula 
to get there or uh, i mean we could just straight up give exemptions to states like yeah that makes sense and that, that that's could be, very that much could be like actually the... like information that we could yeah. clean. like well, that could be that's... really interesting if like we if we like exempted states that uh, like uh, like if we had like missouri a, a rural state that doesn't have Fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. We had West Virginia. Like we gave one of them that. Like one of them actually accepted it, and then one of them didn't. I'm curious to see what that would do to the economies of both those states. Like it sucks that that's well, gonna like impact that a lot of people. Much... But like it's I, it, you know if if that's what those senators also, a point, want, a point then being missed, a point well, being really really missed is that the fifteen dollar minimum wage, as proposed, was going to be a gradual increase. Thank you. So just uh, if, if, if yeah, like the eleven yeah. like like someone mentioned like eleven dollars was really popular in West Virginia. If it would have passed, it would be eleven dollars right now. Like it would have been it would have been eleven dollars this year, and then it would have gone up to like twelve something next year. Like it, over five years, it would have gotten to fifteen dollars. So this that whole idea. The policy for to go to fifteen, the policy that the Democrats voted on in the Senate was the gradual increase to fifteen dollars over the course of five years. That I is it. Is a gradual increase, but what I'm saying yes. is, states rarely ever go above um, what the what the federal minimum wage is, unless they have a really really good economy, like right. say, California. Exactly. Or, so this or whole Denver. idea that like the proposal that the, the Democrats the Democrats wanted in that bill was going to be economically devastating to all these states is just categorically wrong. Oh wait, real quick, just I, on that I, quick I, fact check: twenty nine states have a higher minimum wage than the federal minimum. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible I, for us to shift away from wage as wait, the so marker ago. for income towards something closer to profit sharing and something closer towards worker actual ownership? Because wage is based on time, not upon the skill that you actually dedicate to the product, right? So uh, there's like no way that that like form of economy would be like compatible with anything that is known to work at the moment, though. That's a that's a long term <laughs> thing. Uh, a very long term like i'm i'm into it but that's not something that's realistic probably with even in my lifetime like it's right now is just like raising <laughs> minimum wages in general for example you know, like Amazon, the the of profit bernie charities. proposed a 40 percent worker representation on boards on corporate boards during his run in 2016. yeah he did but he got crushed on those types of ideas so eh, what, how it. are we going to implement it just get it well, get it well, talking well, Start what do you talking. mean he got crushed on not the that idea? Well, already Maybe his other one. Just start talking. That one. That's pretty like, popular. Because, because here's the thing. Like, you got to consider that we waste so much time. We're in a sand pit every time we talk about the minimum wage. Because we're going to have to have this talk in 2025. We're going to have to have this talk again when we push it again. Rather than actually doing the math and setting it to something that is actually like, I don't know, rate of productivity. Wasn't that like a better uh, indicator what? for from like the 1960s? Or what you do, oh, no. or you just match it with inflation, like we do with the fucking military. Like literally, literally, military increases are predicated on the inflation. You're it's talking about things that make sense, though. That, that's not that's that, not how you know, democracy that's how works. It would be with minimum wage. Be you just match it with whatever the inflation rate is with that year, or with that previous year. Because yeah, if you're gonna talk about if you're gonna talk about what if you're gonna talk about what policies you want passed, you you can't talk about what makes sense, as uh, Clara said, you're, or makes logical conclusions, because that's not how. A, a democracy works in terms of our democracy and how our politicians are going to support or not. Wait, yes, hold on. Wait, hold on. I want to fight. I want to no, fight against this. I wait, disagree with this. this. Our, our government is totally logical. Everything makes logical sense. The reason why it feels like everything is irrational is because you're trying to pass a minimum wage on a federal level, which makes absolutely no fucking sense. The logical mm. way to pass minimum wage is state by state. That's that's the actual mm. logical mm. answer. Anybody that thinks that there's a one size fits all minimum wage, especially 15 an hour for every single state in the country, that California, New York, and Nebraska and Should Iowa we not have, have a federal wage? minimum wage at all? Should uh, we not have a federal I don't think so. Yeah, nah, fuck the federal minimum wage. Get rid of it. have a zero dollar an hour minimum wage. Yeah, let the states set their hey. wages 29 states already set it above the federal yeah. minimum see, see this it means i get stronger they don't even have a minimum wage at all it, give me the union really my, that problem, popular. my problem give is, me the union yeah my yeah well yeah i think unionization would be great um uh and if we had a yeah, president that would fight for those things too that would be great, great as well um but so we my problem Biden is that, that. Uh, if you have businesses paying people uh clearly starvation wages right if people um cannot work for, uh, uh one job right and make enough for a living that's a problem Right? Should those businesses even be in business if they're not, if they can't pay their workers enough um, for them, even in the era? Let's say, let's say uh, we do like the, the variable minimum wage, which someone, else, some of the people have been talking about, right? A variable minimum wage for each uh, uh, different state. That's okay, sure, right? Um, but um, at the very least, people should be able to work one job, one full time job, and be able to have a certain standard of living. Do you believe? Uh, do you agree with that? If you don't agree with that, then. Uh, 
we're, we're, I agree that anybody in the country that works a full time job should be taken care of, but it's not the job of a company to, to that's not their social responsibility. You wouldn't oh, expect them to do okay. that. Okay. Well, yes, we wouldn't expect them to do that. That's why we have a minimum wage. Great. Yeah, Glad but what happens when you make the minimum wage too high and it gets too far away from the value these laborers actually produce? They're just going to automate the so shit. So, first of all, hold on, hold on. First of all, the, uh, the value that uh, Americans have been putting uh, in, um, the, our productivity has been rising for, for decades, right? Um, and our uh, wages have not been uh, keeping uh, pace. Our right? productivity so, has been rising for decades because of what college educated engineers are contributing to our economy not because people at mcdonald's and burger great, king are getting better great, better great, but they I'm suffer sorry, like, they suffer just as much they suffer just as much not, it's not, they stop, suffer, hold on hold on, hold on, stop hold on moralizing, yes, stop yes. moralizing it it's an I, hold, economics hold on, problem. Hold on, i'm not moralizing this i'm not moralizing you this. Are. Hold hold on, again you're putting intentions into my uh, uh no ultimate. you're talking about like they're hold, suffering hold, you're moralizing if you it. let me finish my point then you'll understand what i'm trying to say but by what suffering i mean i mean i mean economically economically suffering that's a thing that we use that's a phrase right economically suffering because the floor is lower because the floor doesn't increase if you increase the floor of your wages right um then uh the wages above will increase i experienced this uh personally um uh when i was uh no at some point i had a job right the minimum wage increased within my state right um and uh i had been making just above or uh, just below that and guess what my wages got bumped because uh, the floor came up, right? To, to uh, retain me as a worker, my my wages were bumped. And that happens all up and down the economy, right? Because we have to- You can to talk retain. to just as many people can... that have the opposite experience, by the way. People that are working that have like gotten their wage up to like 13 an hour and then their state passes like a minimum wage hike and all of a sudden newcomers are making the exact same amount of money they are. Like, I mean, these stories go both ways. Yeah, hold on, like, but hold on, that's a shitty employer. But the, the very fact that the, the floor is uh, uh, raised means that other people, other people uh, will have the opportunity Okay, here's a so, super like, simple question. We can we do exactly a, what, could, could we do a 15 hour minimum wage? 50. 50, no. No one's asking for a 50 Why not? So, why, no, why couldn't we? No, no one's asking for a uh, $50 minimum wage. Yeah, yeah, why, no, why couldn't we no, do it? Hold on. Over what time period? Over what time period? 15 hour minimum no, wage no, over five look, years. Look, yeah, great. This is the one no, thing no, that you hear from no, like fucking conservatives, right? Yeah, uh, show me. No, no one's asking for a $50 uh, an hour minimum wage, right? Uh, we're asking for a reasonable increase um, that would match the productivity. What is reasonable? What I just said, fifteen thousand dollars minimum wage. That's what I'm saying. Why is that reasonable? How do you decide right? that that's, uh, because, that's the number that's because, reasonable? Because uh, looking at um, how productivity has increased over the years, right, um, and seeing uh, how our wage has has, has um, lagged behind, fifteen dollars minimum wage uh, would be a reasonable increase um, to match that productivity. That's productivity how you that has out. not increased equally among In all sectors. That is not mm -hmm. true. So, what what is fifteen dollars an hour supposed to do for somebody living in Silicon Valley? Sorry. It's a moral decision. Yeah, so this doesn't what, make any sense. Sorry, excuse me. What is good? Hold on. What does more money do for a person uh, living in Silicon Valley who apparently can't are uh, who can't no, right like now this really, this, who, who, who can't on their uh, current wages uh, afford this? Their, is, uh, hold on. Holy shit. Holy shit. Don't interrupt me. You can stop. Stop that right now. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so at this moment, you're telling me this person uh, making um, uh, whatever the minimum wage is in California, I don't know what it is, um, but making that, if they're $12. having trouble um, uh, affording their place, if they're having trouble uh, making ends meet, you're asking what would putting more money in their pockets do for them? Yes, that would e ease their burden. Exactly, right? And maybe some, for some places, um, the, uh, uh, the wage needs to be higher. That's why we have uh, state minimum wages, right? So you can raise it above that floor if that's what's necessary for your locality, right? But we can understand that um, there, is, there are certain states, right? Southern states mostly, uh, that won't uh, raise this minimum wage. No matter what, they get rid of, if we had a zero dollar, uh, we had no federal minimum wage, they get rid of their minimum wage, right? And like, let the, the uh, market take care of this. No. No, we can understand that, that there will be starvation wages if uh, some uh, some states, some localities have the ability to do that. So do no. you think if the federal government got rid of the minimum wage, all states would get rid of their minimum wage? I didn't wage? say all states. I didn't. I literally didn't say I all states. I said some southern states, right? Some conservative states might get rid of their uh, own minimum wage. That's a possibility too, because if we are we are we saying that there should be no floor, so a federal floor, right? Then why should there be a state floor? There should be a state floor because a state will ideally there should be a city floor that's the ideal but state is probably the most local level you can get it to I because it, that's just what makes sense if you've lived in different parts of the country you just you know whoa, that to be true whoa. yeah that's whoa. true but then well, that, that, that just makes sense well, isn't really an argument like, though no but okay like, i'm sorry oh, my, okay hold on no, you, you brought up I'm a point so, to me that i'd like so, to respond to 
Yeah, I, oh, wait, I, real quick. I'm sorry that I said that. It should make sense. What I'm saying is the cost of living is obviously different in different areas. If I go to Omaha and I want to find a red a one bedroom fucking lot, I can find one for five hundred or six hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. You can find you can find apartments for downtown. Okay, yeah. in the fucking old market for like thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks a month, right? If I want to find a the one bedroom that I'm in right here is twenty four hundred a month. Okay, obviously I, the, the wage requirements are not the same between here and fucking L.A. and and over in Omaha or in Des Moines or in Chicago or right. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. The, 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 uh, okay. Okay, um, Sorry, I just I just wanted to respond to Prime's point earlier, which it kind of just okay, rolls off of what Dustin was saying. Yeah, so the like it just seems virtue signaling this idea that just passing fifteen dollars an hour is going to fix all the problems. That I didn't say that. that Hold on. I address, didn't say that. Right? I didn't say okay. that. Don't put those words in my mouth. Did I say that to solve all problems? I didn't say that at all. You can Pat, oh, also, can I say like that if you if it was oh, to pass, that's literally the opposite of the definition of a virtue signal. Yeah. Is like if you literally put something she into law, that out. is not a virtue signal. Like you've you've actually done the virtue. Uh, like, yeah, I, 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 I just want to know for the record. I just want to know for the record. I just want to sorry. I just want to know for the record. I didn't toss him out. Uh, he dropped. Uh, he he just dropped, but okay. I didn't toss him out. Um, so well, he can come on. A lot of them back right here. Should you not be able to like? Wouldn't at the very minimum, like, like as opposed to like no minimum wage, couldn't you literally just like copy pasta your argument for like let's say even fun fuck Wyoming and just have that at least be the federal minimum wage? Yeah, so that, we that, could. Uh, S K R D S K person has had their hand up like the entire time. Go, this person should talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I I just had a question. So, um, were you being serious about like eliminating the federal minimum wage? Sure, it's shit. There's no reason to have it. Um, so Honestly, for. That's Stardust. So, so I guess for there, there are states that I guess don't have one. Uh, is what I what I'm. Yeah, there are uh, there just just for so people know, like clarification. Yeah, but five states don't have one at all on the books: Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Uh -huh. Two states, Georgia and Wyoming, have one that is lower than the federal minimum wage. Just so I would I I guess I would ask is uh, uh like how would we. How would how would we make sure that people are still making livable wages in some of these states? Like, how would don't, you propose that happens? So we, we don't, don't care about livable wages. It doesn't mean anything. We don't need uh -huh. somebody to make a living wage. What we need is we, do, we need to make sure that there's some bare level of like social factors that are met. So you should have access to yeah. healthcare. You should have access to a place to live. You should have access to food and clothing. Like these are the things that have to be met. The idea when you when you mm -hmm. peg things on this like, concept of like a living wage, what you're doing is you're like shouldering the burden of taking care of society on firms that might not have the incentive to pay that much for labor that's just quite frankly not worth that much. So then what happens is, is as the and this is why i asked um prime earlier over and over again why don't we have a 50 dollars an hour minimum wage the reason is because the farther you move away from what the natural price level would be for some given labor the farther you get away from that the greater negative impact you're going to see in the economy where people that are low skill workers that only have some high school are going to fall greater and greater and greater into unemployment that's what's going to happen the further you get away from it now okay. as of right now our minimum wage has always been set to like about where it's pretty close to where we would like naturally have our wages at anyway even if there was no minimum wage but if that gets yeah. higher and higher and higher and higher those people are going to get fucked so so then what would be the proposal to like make would it be to make housing more affordable or what would be what you say that we shoulder too much of the burden on on the wages that we make so what would where would you shift that burden then tax policy tax policy is so good you can target people so perfectly with fucking taxes and make me rock fucking hard. <laughs> taxes are nice because we can go after exactly who needs exactly what type of compensation the problem with minimum wage is minimum wage is like you you have like a, a circuit board that you're trying to attach a fucking diode mm -hmm. to and you bring in a sledgehammer and you just you just try to like hammer it on if you have a kid that's fresh out of college or, or not even out of college mm -hmm. i'm sorry if you've got a kid that's like mm -hmm. working in high school because he wants to make a little bit of extra money and you've got like a single mother with a family of three to try to set one wage policy for both of these people is just insane the, yeah. the, the needs of these people are different. A kid in high school yeah. can fucking work and make $8 an hour. Like, fuck him. He's like, it's just extra play money for him. His wage requirements are way different than a mother that has to provide like food, clothing, and education okay. for like three children. So here's, here's That's part of the problem. Here's, here's, part of the problem. Like, here's part of the problem. So right, what, what about – Okay, like, I'll let you go. Finish, finish your point, Stardust. Uh, I'm sorry. I just finish have questions. Point. Finish your point. So, so, so how would, uh, I guess, tax policy um, fit into what you were saying about health care and, and things like that? So like a really good example of, um, well, for, for healthcare, we should have, we should have some form of like social healthcare. Um, we need to have some form of like universal multi-payer or single payer system sometime. Um, that, that's just like a given every single other country seems to figure that out, but the United States. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then for other things, I mean, like you've got like programs like the earned income tax credit. You've already, you know, somebody brought up the concept earlier, like negative income tax. You know, you have like UBI, you have tax credits that are refundable for like number of dependents you have. Like there's a whole bunch of different ways to tax policies yeah. that we can like razor target the people that need money in society rather than just saying like, oh, well, all of you guys now get 15 an hour. Like, good luck, figure it out. When that's just going to lead to increasing unemployment in the people that probably need that money the most. Okay. But aren't taxes like incredibly unpopular and, and like, yeah, they're unpopular because much... they're stupid, but they're, they're so good. Okay. Like look at our IRS. Okay. IRS yeah. is underfunded because both sides fucking hate it. And the IRS is like one of the few organizations, the more money you put in, the more money you get out. There is so much money out there right now that the IRS knows that is out there that they can't go after just because we don't have the fucking funding for them. So, I agree. Taxes are unpopular, but that's just because Americans are so, stupid. So the point, yeah, let's I militarize like... the IRS, right? Like just give them tanks. We it's actually, not hell, we actually, actually should. should. Can you imagine? I agree with that. Can you imagine? Who just said it? I love you. I, let's take all the fucking militarization <laughs> of the police. Let's give those fucking tanks to the IRS and have them roll into yeah. fucking rich neighborhoods. Oh, and just I want that the IRS to I, show up to my door. Oh, I yeah. want the IRS oh, to yeah. show up to my door in a tank. I want I, them to come I, out. I want them to like demand. Oh my uh, God. So I, I, paratroopers <laughs> parachuting into fucking gated rich communities, <laughs> jacking that fucking so overdue tax. I, 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 I 100% agree with you on this point. Um, so yes, Biden we should empower the IRS. Absolutely. Let's let's do that. Um, Because for every, like, like for every dollar we put into the irs is like a like a dollar 20 or something along those lines you get back so um i'm definitely in favor of empowering the irs to go after these rich motherfuckers yes let's harass them like we harass poor people love it um but i want to go back to your point um uh steven on um uh, about the kids right like oh well these uh these 16 year olds yeah they don't have uh the same um um, uh, concerns, right? Yeah, wage requirements. Oh. Now, that's not necessarily the case. You don't know any uh, particular uh, person's um, uh, situation, right? So there are stop, kids. Stop, 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 stop. Please don't give me the story of, well, what about the one 16 year old person that's actually taking care of 50? Hold There's on. always going to be outliers, of course. But broadly Ow. speaking, and I will put my fucking life on this. You can take three inches on my fucking dick if I'm lying, okay? Broadly speaking, <laughs> a 16 year old kid going to high school does not have the same wage requirements as a single parent taking care of three fucking look, children. Okay, okay, look, okay. look, look, no, look, 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 look. First of all, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second, one second, hold on. Um, look, uh, I don't need to address your fetish here. We can do that later privately. Um, DM me, my DMs are open, okay? But first of all, yeah. no, um, we don't have to first of all compare them exactly to uh, a, a person with, um, uh, with three kids, right? That's not, oh, wow, hold on one second, please. Uh, uh, one second. Um, thank you, um, uh, uh, Huff, Huff Daddy? Huff Daddy, LOL, thank you so much for gifting 20 hot tier one gifts up to this channel. That's so kind of you. Thank you for the support. That's really kind of you. Um, I'm not sure if we've already talked before. Um, no, we haven't. Uh, <laughs> you just joined like a second ago um, uh, and you're already uh, gifting. That's awfully kind of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but uh, back to what I was saying. Um, no, we don't. First of all, ha I don't have to like defend the point that like a, a 16 year old might have the exact same um, uh, needs as a mother, a single mother um, uh, supporting three kids. I don't have to defend that point. However, I'm saying that you don't know their situation, right? There are so many kids, right, uh, uh, with within uh, poor families, right, that do have to chip in, right, do have to help out, and they aren't just using this, right, for to buy video games or whatever the fuck, right? Um, and their uh, wages, right? If they are doing the same job, why should they not have the same work? They're putting the, uh, with the the same effort the uh, uh player is extracting the same amount of worth from them so why would their uh uh work Wait, stop, be because hold on because First of all, don't talk, don't give me the same effort, same work thing. Because if we were going to say that, then fucking minimum wage people, like the, the argument for a higher minimum wage is just completely out the, the window. If you're talking about just compensating people for like the, the value of their work or something, then now you're justifying like the gross difference in pays between like CEOs and like line level employees. If you, if you want to talk about the value of that. I don't want to justify the gross. Oh, no, that does okay, not. Well, then don't, the then don't, then, okay, no, so then doesn't. we're not talking. Okay, then they we're not talking. CEOs about, don't put that we're not talk, effort. We don't, we don't want to compensate somebody in society for their direct value to society, okay? That's a shitty idea. Hold on, hold on. I didn't say that. I said I said the labor they you put said into that if, the You job, said that if two people are putting not, on the same type of labor, they should get the same same type of compensation. Yes. I'm saying, but you said to, uh, to society. I didn't say that. I said to their job. To the if I am lifting, if I'm creating 15 widgets, right, and the other person is creating 15 widgets, we're providing the same value to the uh, business, right? Why should our wages be different? Starting anyway. Why should okay, our starting wages, wages be different? The wages can be the same, but the compensation from the government has to be different. That's what the I'm compensation saying. Compensation for the government. Uh, I have a question for Destiny. Because what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that, like, let's say there's a single mother, okay, or a single father, a single parent, and you've got like a high school kid. These people don't need the same compensation. You don't know right? that. When I, when I, what? 
Oh my God, you're making me want to video game myself, okay? Please do. <laughs> oh, look. Hey, look, you can't handle this. Listen, no, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Go ahead. On an aggregate, on average, a single parent with dependents has different wage requirements than somebody with no dependents. Sure. Okay? okay. It's working at a younger age. Sure. The wage requirement, the compensation more specifically needs to be different because the the, the person with dependents has more people that's relying on them. So what I'm saying is that like the way that we would compensate these people, to try to say that the firm, the company, should pay them the same doesn't make sense. Well, we could target them with tax policy if you have they already do that yeah of course i agree we do the and it works the company really well. like, is, the company is benefiting from is their labor the company is benefiting from their labor right so the company should be the one uh to pay them the company right? is not going to pay people 15 dollars an hour oh, for force them to do that yes they will uh no they won't they'll the automate it walk into any fucking oh, they're, already more 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 things. Things. they're literally already automating things the, the goal is to automate right now i'm fucking uber right the goal was to fucking automate oh. the, the entire their entire fleet get rid and of them right and pay below right the higher the wages go the quicker the automation do that anyway. Capitalists will no, do that they're... anyway. Why, hold on, why would capitalists want seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour uh, uh, in labor costs, right? When they could have zero, or, or close to zero, because you know you're you still have to maintain them. But I'm true. saying, you I'm saying pay... when you automate, right, I'm saying yeah, dropping your labor uh, labor costs close to zero because you're and automating labor costs it. Are not zero. You're gonna pay people to maintain. I know, I know. That's why I said close to zero. That's why I said close to zero. That's why I said close, close to zero. Holy shit, dude! Hold on. So we we can understand that we replace a factory full of workers, right? Like we like that we understand that during the um um. Uh, the automation of the car industry, right? People were losing jobs, right? And then labor costs were falling. We can understand. Yes, there are uh, people who maintain the uh, the machines. Yes, that's that's absolutely the case, right? But we can understand that more people lost their jobs. We we get that, right? That's how automation works. That you save costs, right? You save yes, on but if you, labor costs. If you costs, accelerate the increase of wages, then you make automation that. more incentivized. Anyway, they that. will do that anyway. Capitalists, if, if capitalists can automate, they will automate. Okay, if they, if they if the if the, if the argument is going to be they're going to do it anyway, let's just make the minimum wage thirty an hour and stop fucking around. I don't understand no, like, this. Well, like, you're going to do it anyway. Dusty, uh, what is what do you think the rationale is for any minimum wage? There is the. It, it, the the rationale for the minimum wage is that we're too stupid to set tax policy correctly, so we're going to use a sledgehammer to try to get well, like the same wages paid to totally different types of workers. Why totally do you think that there's this life. substantive benefit to the use of tax policy as opposed to wage policy? I mean, tax because tax, tax policy, policy because uh, tax policy allows wage us to allocate tax, tax policy allows us to allocate the money exactly where it needs to go and exactly who it needs to go to and the exact amounts that we want it to. But the the same arguments on the side of uh, sort of the liberalization movement of of economies. Are made with, with respect to tax policy that tax policy necessarily distorts um that it creates deadweight loss in the same way that these kind of regulations do so my, my question is you know why you made reference to a natural wage before that that minimum wages prevent you from getting to the natural wage do you think absence a minimum wage we'd have something approaching a quote natural wage what is a natural wage whatever your labor is being purchased for by whatever company you go to work for well i think the policy rationale of minimum wages has to do with the difference in bargaining position between actors. So actors that are highly sophisticated, like employers, are able to extract increasing amounts of rents from employees who aren't sophisticated and don't have bargaining leverage and for whom employment is an inelastic a good. And therefore, uh, they're able to have a much lower wage than what is socially efficient. And that's the purpose of minimum wages. And I, I think mean, it, but it totally depends on the type of labor market that we're talking about. So if we look at the, if we look at, for as much as I fucking hate him, if we look at Trump's labor labor market prior to the coronavirus, our unemployment was at like fucking three and a half percent. It was unbelievably low. And you could drive around these cities where these wages were going up and up and up, and people could not find workers to fill their shops. It was fucking unbelievable. Like some of the squeezes that people were in. Now I do agree with you that there are times where if you want to talk about like monopsony power, so like you can only get to one job. Yeah, you're pretty fucked when it comes to bargaining. And I do agree with you that the bargaining power between labor and capital depending on where you are can be heavily distorted in favor of capital absolutely this is a really good argument in favor of things like unions which was being talked about earlier mm -hmm. but to come at it with a federal with a federal fucking minimum wage with the biggest fucking bad boy <laughs> fucking hammer that every fucking firm in the entire fucking country has to pay 15 that is like the sloppiest fucking sloppy joe like on a the, the, all over the bunch is it sloppy it is so is it sloppy when we is it sloppy when we have is it sloppy when we have federal regulations over uh, certain types of industries i mean we have federal 
regulations with respect to finance. Absolutely markets. it is. You want a really great example of this? Really sloppy type of regulation? Look at intellectual property laws and look at how horrible they've been at keeping up with stuff on the internet and digital well, content because I we know. have like this huge one size fits all. We haven't no, modernized. Okay, but I, imagine, imagine what our intellectual property rights would be if, if the substantive law were all decided by states. I mean, think about what, what it is to have intellectual <laughs> property these uh, with right. the internet. It's, I mean, it's, it's harder when we decide that state by state because there's so much commerce. Like that's legitimately that's right. like interstate commerce, right? But when it comes to labor, that's a much more localized force. You're not allowed to sell your labor on a national market generally, right? Unless you're lucky if you're an engineer, white collar worker you are. But if you're like a lower class worker, if you work at McDonald's, you're not selling your labor on the on the national market. You're doing it like fucking down the street. The world I mean, is changing. I, you mm -hmm. know, then, then maybe more, you know, I think there's other policy rationales for federally regulating certain industries uh, and IP as opposed to uh, labor on a federal level. But there are a lot of rationales for having one rule fits all. One of them is a la like la lack of transaction costs. Everyone knows what the rule is. Everyone's on notice. We don't have to argue about it. I think there are a lot of benefits to having one rule as opposed to many different principalities. There are benefits, but if that rule is too broad and causes too many external harms, like for instance, increasing unemployment between low skilled workers, like it has in Seattle, where the well, minimum wage was only like three dollars different when they reached the fifteen hour, like then you have to stop and wonder. We know. Well, we, we, let's see this rule. But with respect, um, we know mm -hmm. that minimum wages are going to decrease labor, uh, the labor force. If it didn't. I don't. I don't know what it would be doing. We sure. we accept it as a cost that when we have a minimum wage and we establish it, people are going to be priced out of hiring. And mm -hmm. but we we think that either there's there's gains to productivity somehow. And keep in mind for all these CBO reports, one of the assumptions is that there's not going to be a gain in um in growth. We think that there could be growth effects as a result of a minimum wage increase. And we think that um it might divert other costs right. from the government. You, theoretically, if you could though, how based would it be that you have two people working at like Burger King and yeah. one is a high school kid and he's making 9.50 an hour. And then another is like a you know single parent, they're working 9.15 an hour. But like at the end of the day, the the person, the single parent is Gets getting more. like twice as much on their paycheck yeah. because they're getting like tax kickbacks. Well, listen, like, I, 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 so much. And then I the even company have wage have... in the first place. Honestly, Why would you ever hire the older person in that scenario? They, they're making the same amount. I'm saying they're getting more of their paycheck because the government of tax would be good. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, well, why not charge them zero an hour and then just like fix it on the back end through taxes then? I, I don't. Because I don't think the. Because they're still going to pay something, right? Why? Why? Because you're going to have people that are participating in the labor market that don't require all those government. I mean, if, if I'm working at Burger King and somebody else is doing the same job, we're both getting paid the same amount, but then my taxes are like giving me double or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, why not just pay us both zero and then have the the government do it through the back end and pay pay us the, that same amount? Because we some were, company then is, is going to start paying their workers two dollars an hour, and you're going to go to get all of your taxes and then work for two dollars, and then another company's okay, going to pay three dollars. So we're deciding and that we need to limit it at some. Well, point. no, we don't. Eventually, like the market would settle on some wage where people are going to pay you what they think they can as a as a share of their labor costs, right? But this is already being arbitrarily decided by the government, like what the person deserves. If we're if we're like giving oh, no, them, no, a that's why I'm saying we decided on the tax end, right? On the on the tax end, we can make that decision. Like, hey, like if you're a single parent, you need to make this much money. Like, we're going to make sure that you know we shore up your wages. It's going to happen. Like, that's going to happen from the general fund. You don't think this is an issue with so, distribution? Sorry. Um, you think well, this I don't didn't... know. You think it... that we have to solve this with distribution? Hell yeah, but... redistribution. I'm fine with that. But do you think that? Do you, you acknowledge that the distribution is the issue that we're fixing here yeah, with course. redistribution? Yeah. So what are your solutions to addressing the distribution aspect? There is no good solution that I've heard for addressing the distribution aspect. So let's Access. go to... Um... Uh, okay, also, hold on. If, if I could for a real also, quick second. There's, there's no free lunch. I have, a, I have a study that I'd like to uh, give y'all real quick. I don't know. We can look at it. You want us to read to, uh, like a 15 person panel? Of study no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just posting it for well, we one page. Um, but <laughs> just because I was, I was looking through this and, you know, just because I want to be able to cite this. Right. But um, essentially, it's just saying that, like, there has been a massive increase in the amount of like CEO pay versus like worker pay. Right. Uh -huh. Is that like increase of that pie going to the CEO, not the issue that we should be addressing. Well, well what Destiny is suggesting uh, is that these CEOs and executives are much more productive than other workers, and they're mm, and they've oh, uh, and he he would want to tax them tax at, at the, the back end. And, yeah. and, and, and that yeah. doesn't address yeah, his, uh, his problem uh, with the small businesses as well. Um, so, but I, I also want to go. Nine Tails has been waiting patiently. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was hearing about the automation thing, and I noticed something that I wanted to call out, but it would have been just, I would have had to talk over somebody. Um, 
I think Destiny's argument that des automation is just going to take over and they're just going to use that in place of paying workers a minimum wage is a reason to do the $15 minimum wage sooner before a lot of this automation technology is available and reliable. Then later, when it is available and reliable and it's easier for employers to do that. I also think that I th your overall anal analysis seems to be very flawed. You, I, I don't know if you're willing to criticize capitalism in this. So don't you see how like if workers did own the means of production, if not the actual businesses themselves, they'd be far more incentivized to value themselves and each other's families than a CEO would who just owns like the capital or whatever. Sure, super quick, easy question. And if the workers own the means of production, how do you start a new company? Oh, public banking. <laughs> it, how, do you, how does the public bank decide who gets to start a company? What do you mean? As in, let's we, say a million people. Is there no such thing as a co-op destiny? Have a chamber of a commerce that decides. What, it. what is a co-op? A co-op is, co is, is a formation of a business where everybody no, has no, equal no. ownership. That is an incredibly difficult time to start because and, getting and, access to capital is very difficult because you can't sell shares of your company. So that's but that's because of capitalism. No, if, no, if you didn't no, like capitalism, no. fuck it's because you're banning. It's because you're banning uh, outside ownership and outside investors. Yes, if thank if you. you if you need to have a worker buy-in, then almost by definition, you're not allowing residual claimants exactly. from outside, um, and so you you have to rely on your but financing. Not all co -ops, either, no. Not all either by debt claims, right? A, a lot of uh, corporations and a lot of people don't want to finance their adventure with debt claims because it's highly risky and people don't want to loan to this startup uh, with, with just debt claims. So they'll sell residual claims or, or shares. And so th there's problems with finance. So Destiny's not worried about any particular subset of the economy. He's worried about everyone overall. Mm -hmm. And so you were saying that, you know, maybe in one system, that there might be more labor benefit or, or benefit for the labor force in one system as opposed to another. No, my, my criticism is that he's not willing to factor in capitalism into his analysis. I'll factor in capitalism, but you have to give me a better alternative. And co-ops just have huge problems with initial capital. It's hard to start a new business. Like Dr. Vane over there was saying, well, what about banks? Well, how, so what, does people have to vote on which businesses get to start in a society? Do they well, it's starting to, to sound, but if commerce. capital is the issue, then it's starting to sound like not capitalism is a solution. We currently no, no, do no, that with not, the Chamber of Commerce. Solutions are not, first of all, no, that's what? not true. Anybody can go and get an SBA loan if they want. You don't have to go to the Chamber yes, of Commerce of to get that approved. What are you talking about, oh, the Chamber well, yeah, of Commerce? Not the Chamber of Commerce. That's what you... Chamber what, of Commerce what, what, is a... Either like way, a like, that sounds like an answer to your own question. You are... No, how is it... What I'm asking is, is that... So right now in my system, if I want to start a business, all I have to do is raise money and I can start a business, okay? And in a co-op system, it, how do you start... How, do you, how does anybody decide who gets to start a business? Do people not, like, crowdfund things nowadays? Is that not possible? Uh. I'm gonna video game well, myself. Okay. 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 Really? So I, I, okay. I, I, so we're out of the question because magically, we're, I think we're kind of getting lost here. He's, he's just not responding. He's just sure, sure. Well, but I think hold on. We'll, I avoided we'll the question because question the idea now. that you would have to fucking like right. welcome to society. Like, oh, do you want to start a business? Well, here's Indiegogo. Good luck raising. Well, you're the making it sound impossible. It is impossible. You're not going to crowdfund. So it's not impossible. Okay, everyone, everyone, shut up. Hold on, everyone, shut up. Everyone, please. Thank you. I start us. I see your hand. Um. But yeah, I I see. <laughs> I think we're getting lost now um, because the issue was fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage, right? Yeah. Um, and now we're getting lost in uh, different uh, business types. Now I would love to uh, increase uh, the number of co-ops, and I think we could uh, alter the rules um, uh, of our system um, of, our, of our banking system, for instance, to make this more feasible, uh, so they get startup capital, or or uh, for instance, um, I encourage them through uh, government grants or loans or whatever. I, I think there are ways to do this, um, but we're getting lost in that sauce. I want to get back to this uh, idea of $15 an hour minimum wage. Okay, um, uh, so uh, and I'm going to take a quick uh, moment um, to say uh, uh, thank you, uh, Katarana, for gifting that five hot tier one gift subs and Katarana for like, I think right now in terms of my pay, uh, pal donations, you're number one all the way for the month. Thank you, Katarana, for being so kind. Um, Those were tier threes. Those were tier threes. She gave, what, tier threes? She no. Yes. Holy shit, you gave tier threes. Holy fuck. Yeah. I did not notice that. Oh, wow. Thank Colorado, you. Colorado, thank you for those five hot tier three subs. What? I did not notice that. Thank you for letting me know. Holy crap, Colorado. Holy crap. Um, You're halfway to crowdfunding your business. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> almost there. Almost there. Thank you for the five tier three um, subs, Colorado. Holy crap. I hope you saw that. Hopefully you didn't just leave the moment I said this. Um, but anyway, okay. So uh, we are... Uh, we're gonna $50 go to, minimum wage. Yes, yeah, $50 right? minimum wage. Hold on. Let's go to uh, Stardust and then um, uh, Canadian. Uh, well, I was just going to comment on the stuff from before, but I don't want to uh, 
yeah. do that. So, so yeah, I don't want to yeah. go back on that right now. Um, yeah. So let's go. Uh, uh, Canadian, are you going to talk about $15 minimum wage? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I just want to ask the room, um, how do you guys feel about tying the minimum wage to product productivity increases. Because I'm looking at a Center for Economic and Policy Research paper that states that if we were to do that, one, it would be much higher than 15, and two, in the long run, that would solve this issue of always having to legisl legislate what our minimum wage is in any given time period. What is productivity? Okay, can we, real quick, okay. okay. Do oh, we know geez. we know that all, all black people in this country are not the same, right? We know that there's different yeah. groups, right? We know that all brown people in this country are not the same, right? We know that all white people in this country are not the same. Whenever you look at something on such a huge aggregate, you totally miss everything. When people do these things where they talk about productivity and they say, well, the productivity of the American worker, wages haven't kept up. That's not actually true at all. What's happened is, is people have taken like our productivity on an aggregate. And then they said that like the aggregate wages haven't kept up. Productivity has massively spiked in certain industries and it hasn't spiked in others. Like productivity is increasing among like the white collar, like college educated engineering jobs. That's where the massive gains in productivity are. The idea that we would peg like a minimum wage and, and say that, well, productivity has grown everywhere. So it should keep up with all that. Like, do you want to peg a minimum wage on everybody in the aggregate productivity? I, like, sorry. I also well, think part, part, of the appeal of a minimum part of the appeal of a minimum wage is also having a bright line rule and not having to do a lot of calculations about any particular industry. And so I think a lot of those efficiency gains from having a minimum wage and having something just tell you what you have to pay with the threshold, uh, you lose some of that when you have to have these like back end calculations tied to a particular industry. So, uh, so yeah. major, major part of like, the problem. Okay, so, I was gonna say, uh, go ahead, real quick, go ahead. So from, from like a general perspective, right? Like, so increases in productivity are partially due to like autom automation and using machines. This applies to low skilled uh, labor as much as it does high skilled labor. Like McDonald's spends millions of dollars per year making like their back rooms more efficient. So the average like uh, amount of, 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 of money that's produced per even the lowest skill, uh, lowest skilled labor is incentivized to be higher. So I don't see that as that being that ridiculous because even in those low skill jobs, we do invent machines to make those jobs more productive and more economically beneficial to those industries. But you're, you're talking about things that happen basically on the back end because a corporation does well and, and makes more money doesn't necessarily mean that, that basically the low skilled front end worker is basically doing more or is actually producing more uh, to Destiny's point. So say for example, if you put the, the onus on the business to basically have to pay say $20 an hour or $50 an hour minimum wage, that increases the likelihood that they're just gonna try and, and out efficient um, or, or basically make that front end process more and more efficient so that they can gain more money. This goes back to the, the whole problem to begin with, which is basically that we can't properly tax these corporations and people that make giant amounts of money Be, because you're basically you're saying the, the people at the bottom should basically have a, a bigger chunk of the share. I think everybody can agree with that. The point is, is that the approach is, is different or is maybe is, is a wrong headed approach. Okay. I, I want to take issue with with Destiny's panacea of tax policy. Okay. I think there's there's no such thing as a free lunch, and every you know expenditure or benefit that you're you're giving to some sector of the economy is taken at expense of another part of the economy that's, that's paying a representatively a larger amount yeah, of taxes. Take it from the so, fucking wealthy people; they can afford it. But Fuck. but, but it, it it distorts things in just the same way, or or you know maybe we can have differences of opinion about how it distorts and and what magnitude, but it distorts things just as. Uh, wage policy might. My my problem is why do you have this specific criticism of a federal minimum wage and not other types of federal regulations? It seems. I mean, uniquely... it would depend on the federal regulation. I think that uh, any particular rule should be like as specific as is reasonably possible. I don't think you would disagree with that. Now, no. I agree that there's going to be like we shouldn't have like, for instance, so for taxes, we shouldn't have an individual tax code for every single different U.S. citizen. But like taxes are something that we can do at a sufficiently like um, complex and sophisticated level per person. So like, why not? Um, but I, I mean, there are going to be other things that need to be more broad when we talk about certain regulations. It, it just depends on what we're talking about. We would have to think of the particular thing. So do you think that uh, everyone, the country would be better off were we to abolish the federal minimum wage? Only if it was replaced with like other types of like minimum social safety net programs. Okay. Like, so then the, my, my problem then is uh, in a lot of your conversations, key, I feel to your policy prescriptions are, is like kind of realism is understanding yeah. that policies don't exist in a vacuum, that they are they have to be implemented and whether or not it's done in concert with other actors matters. And so are you confident that you can have this kind of decentralized push towards 
greater worker Fuck no. Rights. If we only got one right. I said it on the beginning of this po po panel. I think Democrats passing 15-hour minimum wage is base as fuck for their platform. It would give them a ton of political popularity. But I think that there are other things that are more important to push for that not only are more pragmatically possible, but I think move us towards a better economic ideal. So for instance, if I'm going to see political capital spent in one area, God damn, it needs to be in fucking healthcare. That is yeah. something that has to, there's so much more agreement in the healthcare world than in this fucking minimum wage world. And, the, and for the healthcare shit, we don't even have to use our brains. Okay, we can go fucking full stack overflow mode. Where we just copy paste a solution from another country right into the United States. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different in implementation, but this is something that every other country has figured out. Like, let's start there. And then once we have healthcare figured out, our conversations about minimum wage become so much less heated because now it's not a conversation about whether or not somebody can afford their fucking chemotherapy or not. Now it's just like, okay, well, what 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 don't we provide right now in society that the wages aren't? I I, I agree that minimum wages aren't going to be a huge boost of growth in this country and and shouldn't be on the top of progressives list but i also think you're being a little bit naive about the complexity and difficulty of passing healthcare regulation in this sure. country we've had numerous eras where mm -hmm. we've tried to pass healthcare regulation and it's been defeated and we got and it the took, ACA. it, was it huge. took it took a, a huge amount of pushing and we had we to did. have the drug companies on board the uh american medical association on board all the insurers on board everyone in concert and even then right it was it's been yeah but there have been huge pushes like that we have we've had women's suffrage we had the civil rights act we have gay marriage like there are, we had the ACA. but it's a like, big it's a lot of political capital so what is. you're saying is not sure. it's not a trivial we got, we got the crime bill and we lost congress for it we got the the assault weapons ban was a big part of that and democrats paid a huge price for it the aca we got that and we lost congress for six years democrats paid a huge price for it like yeah there's but, a lot but of but you suggested that you know healthcare would be an easy compromise and we could all it's, it's an easier thing to go I, I through. I think that healthcare, because I think we're at that moment in U.S. history where the conversation now ha has moved to that, where you're getting like a lot of bipartisan support on things like not single payer, not the insane, stupid fucking shit that that uh, that these Medicare for all lunatics push. Wait, wait. insane to implement, not it's insane to implement, but not insane, insane by itself. Insane politically, like it's dead okay. on arrival. Dead well, you should, you should arrival, clarify that. Okay? Yeah. yeah, this is like aborted out the fucking dick before it's even made a fucking embryo. Okay, that's how <laughs> dead that shit is. But on on successful multi pair systems. Okay, hold on. I'm talking a lot. Nine tails has had her hand up for a while. Yeah, no, hon. Yeah. Um, I'm. And before that, uh, before that is uh, uh, Jula, who's had his hand up. So I'm going to go to Jula first. Um, um, yeah, right, I, I wanted to ask um, Destiny, his general view on this system is essentially let the market work and essentially how it is right now, let it grow and then build a big welfare uh, state around that, which I think is something that works, especially if we're going to assume automation will be coming and automation still will be producing you know, wealth and value. So we need the mechanisms in place to make sure we're able to use that value in an effective way now. So that is a much better long-term plan. Um, it seems like the $15 minimum wage is yesterday's news when it comes to preparing our economy for the future. Yeah, 100%. Markets are so good at doing what they do. Let them do what they do. And then we'll just take care of everybody else on the back end. Use tax policy for it. Don't fuck with the markets so much. Like people like rent control and crazy shit like that. Like the markets and do tax what they policy. Do. Let them do what they do. Like market socialism. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. man. Yeah, definitely disagree yeah. with all yeah, this. Yeah, market socialism. Um, they say. Um, yeah. But let's go to uh, uh, Ninetales. And then uh, I think uh, Captain A.J. had his hands up. And maybe I'll jump back into this. Uh, go ahead, Ninetales. Yeah, so I, I quickly read over a couple of meta-analysis of the adverse effects of minimum wages in various places, not just the U.S. Um, it seems like specific labor groups may be more vulnerable than others, particularly uh, part-time employees and their ability to be retained. However, I, I'm hearing a, a line of logic that goes, we can't stop this sort of thing from, from being abused or we can't stop certain workers from being hurt, so we just shouldn't do it. I think that the, that the more that we get into, like, well, okay, it's not all laborers that are going to be negative effectively, it's just very specific ones. The more uh, the more we can regulate these things and the less abstract it is to to regulate that, you know, part-time employees are part time uh, you know, I, I don't know. In this case, it would probably be like a contract or something um that they that they get to sign. But um in general, I think that protecting workers while giving them a higher minimum wage is better than uh not giving them a higher minimum wage and not protecting them. Okay. Um, uh, um, Jones? Yeah, so I mean, like, I think something that we're kind of uh, missing here might be like the, <laughs> might be uh, like as leftists, because I think I do this too. Like, I want to live in, in, a, in an ideal world as well, where everyone can get paid a fair wage, uh, no matter what, what, they're, what they're working on. But like, uh, I, I would totally settle for an $11 minimum wage right now rather than pushing for 15. I think that it was really overambitious of the Democrats to push for a $15 minimum minimum wage in the um, 
in the relief bill. I think that's something they could have tried to do later, maybe. But like doing it in the relief bill, I think was just a really big overstep because what we have to realize, like I'm I'm in San Francisco. I'm in a fucking bubble. I, I'm in a liberal utopian bubble. It's amazing. It's awesome. But the problem is there's people in the middle of the country, like where Joe Manchin is. And he's not in the middle of the country. He, he's not in the middle of the country. Oh, I don't even know where the fuck West he is. West Virginia. Right? He's just West a Virginia. senator. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's on the coast. He's coast so. <laughs> but it, so what but what I what I understand though is that he's a, he's basically like a blue dog democrat. He has to cater to blue dog democrats in his area and, and it's a very conservative uh, uh electorate. I mean really it just boils down to the electoral colleges fucked up. So and that might be what we want to aim our focus so, at, is getting rid of I mean, that. Why are we talking I'm, about the rightness or wrongness of the policy? If this is all, you know, political posturing and 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 sort of getting a right strategy that appeals to people in the right places. Well, let's say that, but you know, having these discussions on the merits about whether or not minimum wage is good or not, I well, think that's that the- not, To be fair, that wasn't the original discussion. Okay. The original discussion was over whether or not Biden, I think should have been pushing for it. So that's why we were discussing- Well, I don't know what else Biden could do. I know, you know, people who are blaming Biden for fucking this- true. Hold on, I, hold I don't hold know on, what the- no. I'm saying, oh, okay. So peace go, peace go, this is a- separate, Oh shit, was that, was this, that your position, this, file? Yes. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine, no, it's fine. Because, you know, you weren't here uh, for it, but like I'm saying, uh, yeah. there are, uh, uh, Biden has a bully pulpit. He hasn't actually put any um, executive muscle uh, behind uh, this because I don't think this is actually a priority. He says it's a, uh, a priority of his, but I've literally seen no proof of it uh, whatsoever. Um, and addressing, um, um, I can only address part of your point now, uh, uh, AJ Owens, but I, I'll, I'll address the rest later. Um, but in terms of um, uh, not, uh, attaching the, uh, this amendment um, to this bill, right? Now, you can argue on strategy. That's the one thing. You can argue on strategy. Maybe this wasn't the best strategy. I'll argue against that because um, we, uh, for something like this, it needs to be attached to um, uh, a must-pass bill, right? Like, uh, doing this clean on a clean bill is going to be even, uh, even a harder lift, even a tougher lift uh, to make happen. Um, so, uh, if you actually want to get this done, I would... Uh, attach it to a uh, bill that must like or like for instance like if not this then um like the the defense um the defense act like the uh defense pay act i forget the name of that um i don't know the, the, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 i'm blanking here but you guys know what i'm talking about the uh the bill that um um pays for defense um yeah so defense appropriations bill sorry um yeah, yeah. so like that's another option right but it has to be on a it's almost certainly needs to be on a must pass bill um, so like the, just the strategy of it, I to think avoid the filibuster. Is that yeah, what you're saying? I think, yes. To, uh, to, uh, to avoid, to avoid the filibuster, um, uh, would be one way of doing this. Um, or, um, or just because like, it's something that needs to go. So like if you, once the amendment is attached, right. Um, unless it's, uh, somehow removed, um, then, I mean, job's done, job's done. Cause it guys, you guys, you guys also can't be naive. All right. Mm -hmm. So all these people who are, who are these senators and stuff, you think that they don't know that this is going to fail when they, when they put it forth mm -hmm. in some ways you could, I don't know that this is happening. I'm not in their ears, but you can imagine a world where Biden is giving people like Joe Manchin and cinema an opportunity to vote something down so that they're better. They have a better opportunity in their electoral races in the future. So don't be naive also about, uh, you, you know, the, what it seems like the purpose of putting this forth might not actually be the purpose. Yo, I'm uh, Biden all the uh, way. Uh, Democrats all uh, the way, baby. I'm 100. percent I 100 agree with you. Um, but I can see from uh, from the other side as well, right? Um, one. Like, what, why do you think eight people voted it down? Yeah. You think those? You think those other six would have? If it was going to pass, they would have wouldn't have voted for no, that's, it. That's, They're doing it for a reason. That's definitely a possibility as well. So, like, yes, don't look at things from face value. Hundred percent agree with you there. But also, um, um, the, there is utility even in the loss, right? Even here in the loss, uh, because now you know who's against it, right? Um, possibly, maybe other people would have voted it down. Who knows? Um, but we, we see ah, Prime, but the, but the implication is against you because it's going to help their electoral odds. Not necessarily. Think it's gonna that whole, progressive whoa, whoa, whoa. Not don't understand that because not, Prime is going to tell you that actually they're all of not, their constituents actually not, here's prime i didn't say that what prime is going to say is well actually their constituents super want that but all of those politicians are super corrupt and they all own businesses where they underpay their poor hispanic illegal immigrant employees they're dying with heroin needles out their arms okay. they're being sold okay, up by wow. these politicians so, so they're so never going to vote in favor of these minimum thank wages you. That's, thank that's the argument thank all right, you. So I nice try you I almost love, got in there peace but he came back into the corrupt politician argument i'm so happy to experience once again the magic of your argumentation i got your back i got your back we're, we're plenty I'm of uh, straw man ahoy <laughs> uh the straw man emporium that's what you'll find at uh, uh the destiny's channel twitch.tv slash destiny right if you want 
to straw man you need a straw man uh destiny can provide you don't worry um but um so i think i think one uh the i i know like from polling that it is actually popular right it's it's a popular um p uh, position right to increase the minimum wage right um now um i think also um that uh if if outside groups are going to have a chance of putting any pressure on them at all right you have to identify the people um who've actually voted against it right so yes sure some people um uh maybe it's impossible it, it's a it's a possibility that some of these senators uh, can't be moved right but as uh destiny admitted um fucking a half hour uh, 90 minutes ago um uh, some senators actually can be flipped but first you have to identify them um uh, who is uh, actually holding this up who is voting against this right now that we have that that's the that's another step um uh down the road of actually getting this thing passed later on right okay um so um so can i jump in uh sure you can jump in and then uh but before that uh actually gosh uh thank you for joining us and then we'll uh, go to you strawberry uh, it's been a while. It's Gash. Gash, um, yeah, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so I think uh, there are a couple things that are being missed here. First of all, when we're talking about like whether or not there should be a minimum wage at all, no one is talking about like what a wage is actually for. Uh, people earn wages so that they can fucking survive, so that they can buy food and housing and stuff like what? that. Uh, it's crazy, right? So, and I kind of agree with something Destiny said later, um, which is that, yeah, there should be a big social safety net. So I think if you can decouple like your ability to live from your need to work, uh, then yeah, I'd be, I actually was talking about this the other day with, you know, people in my life, like, yeah, we could abolish the minimum wage as long as everyone has their needs met. At, at that point, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly, that's probably better than a $15 minimum wage. Um, because you're not pricing pricing people out of the labor market from their natural wages, whatever the fuck that means. Some the, nonsense the, bullshit yeah, concept. So the, so the nat so just real quick, because I know that a lot, especially for lefties, I know it's not popular. I don't really idea. care. I don't really fuck? care. I, I, I can tell, I know. I really so, don't care. A, a so wage. I'll just oh, keep I talking the audience. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I, I want to hear this oh, disagreement. No, 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 no. Let, Cash, <laughs> let, let, let Gash finish. We can get back to Steven. He's got plenty of time to talk. I don't give a shit, because economists are wrong about everything all the time. So That's not true. What a base take. My favorite thing about lefties is they're like they're one stone's throw away from like fucking anti-vaxxers or like the Jewish conspiracy theory, but most of them can't see it. I like well, how they're responding. I love how they're responding. Just okay. smears and whatever. But it's, um... Just about a economics. Okay. Based, right. is just random broad smears. Yeah, left, just random okay. broad smears. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> random broad smears. It's not like there's a historical precedent for lefties wanting to you know like be anti-Semitic or anything. You can keep going. What? You have a chance. You can that. Um, I, I don't know where that came from, buddy. <laughs> I love, love you too, Stephen. So anyway, uh, Gash, keep so, going. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So anyway, yeah, if we if we can decouple like the need to work um, from the ability to live, then yeah, there should probably be no minimum wage. That's like a very different society we live in, um, obviously. And then yeah, I mean, is it in, in terms of um, the politics of it? Yeah, I mean, I agree with with Prime that like you would have to, if you were going to pass the fifteen dollars minimum wage, which by the way phases in over four years, and apparently the only poll I can find a majority of West Virginianers support. It's like sixty three percent support yes. this policy. Um, so it's actually a winner for Joe Manchin. So yeah, I mean, you're kind of out of reasons other than his corruption. To you think it's irrational, Gash? I mean, Gash. Did you, did you no, know it's no irrational. He's, he has material he's corrupt. Interest. Yeah, he's yeah, corrupt. Gosh, 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 if you could, all those poor immigrants, he's paying below minimum wage. Gosh, I was dude. looking for that poll again. If you, you could, can say it facetiously. Gosh, if you could DM me that poll, I was looking for that poll Do you think he's irrational? I mean, I don't. I think it's a naive to assume that he's just irrational. I think there's. Of course, he's not irrational. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's, he's guarding he's his capital like, interest. Yeah. He's pretty solid in his state, and he stands to make money off of not raising a minimum wage. So you think it's for it? personal benefit? What that, that he's that he is not. It's either that, or he's posturing, or he's like trying to make a power play in politics. And sixty-three know, percent of West Virginia support. Again, if you could send me that poll again, I was because I was looking for it. I uh, guess. Okay. Um, yeah, but, but, but Joe but, Manchin has an easy out, right? Because Joe Man people don't vote on this this policy per policy way mm -hmm. they're affected by policies but mm -hmm. he can s say to his constituents you know i rep I, I represent a guard against attacks on our institutions mm -hmm. and this the parliamentarian said this was not allowed under the budget reconciliation process. Okay, and I'm really respecting that. Voters give a shit about that. No, no one gives a shit about people, that. Not, not a fucking person. Not, not any constituents anywhere gives a people shit. People care about, about moderate. So, moderate. No, hold on. Seriously. 
are you gonna say this? Peace good, this is gonna be your argument. I'm gonna and, I'm and gonna say my Joe Mansion. Sam, are you uh, for right Sam, right now? Sam, Sam, about the Sam I see your sun. hand up. Don't worry, I have got you. Uh, you'll be after strawberry. Um and then Stardust, I see your hand up as well. Okay. Well, I, I just wanna um, say so moderates perform incredibly well in recent elections. Wrong. Susan Lying. Susan Collins outdid her polls by like eight, nine points. The polls were rigged, was... just like they were against Bernie. You're just wrong, sure, dude. Sure, home. But what's that to do with the point that I was making? So what I, what I, was, I, I think um, when moderates make these decisions to like stop certain legislation, even though it might be popular, they're not doing it because they're looking at polls myopically. They're looking at the the feel of their candidate, who they represent, who they are, and they're. I think they're they're guarding the notion that they're elector, they're electable. And uh, and so yeah, so I I think that there's more to it than just looking myopically at a singular policy poll. Oh no, no. yeah, well obviously obviously there's, oh, we're there's about more, a singular policy. but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we, we we can see. Um, oh, hold on, sorry. Well, uh, I'm gonna end up responding. So it's gonna vote on whether or not Joe Manchin is is left wing or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh god, it's just so much to respond to here. Um, but I'll have to leave that alone for now. But I can get back to it later, Pisco. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's 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 um, one of two things. Either he's acting rationally because he's won in West Virginia and he knows so, what it takes to win, or he's a corrupt do, asshole. Do you who's think? Just do you think money has nothing to do with dollars. anything in politics? Do you think What's money that? has no consideration in politics? Do you think that I, maybe uh, Joe Manchin money? It, and do, uh, receives money from donors um, who would not like uh, the minimum wage uh, raised. If your goal is to maximize the amount of money that you receive in this world, then you should get out of politics. That's because politics isn't like the most lucrative thing. Hold on, what? Do you not know that Manchin is worth seven million dollars? That's a super rich guy. What are you talking about? Hold on, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Um, uh, that's not what I meant. I meant campaign donations, right? So they're not putting the money directly in his pocket. It's for him to be reelected. That's what I'm talking about. So no, I'm not talking about what you're talking about. But that's nice. Thank you for the next delivery of another straw, man. Thank you, Destiny. No, so I'll address it. So I'll address it. So. So, so yes, I think that that politicians are motivated by campaign finance reasons, and but that I, I don't understand why you think. Oh, I see. So the the train of logic is not that he's personally going to profit, but well, he's although campaign. He both. Oh, it's both. Well, because they probably steal money from the campaign contributions. No, and it's, it's, and I saw him. Wow, he's so good at it. He's amazing. Strawman on demand. Strawman so on demand. Good. Thank you so much. But all right. Um, so uh, look, I got to move down this line because people have been waiting, right? Um, so uh, I had decided the line of strawberry, um, uh, Sam, um, uh, Stardust, and uh, Nine Tails. Okay, uh, look, looking at this minimum wage thing and what Destiny was talking about, like. I can see, you know, the tax phasing, the tax credit, um, as, as you know, to compensate for the difference in people's situation and that whatnot. But if you just look at what the way minimum wage is now, the seven twenty five an hour, uh, once you count for taxes, that's about eight hundred and seventy dollars. So if you, you know, account just not account for the high school workers, that's saying that anyone working a minimum wage job, they have to live off eight hundred and seventy dollars a month. I think that. I think that's ridiculous. Once you once you even pay for rent and then food, what, what, what do you have left for transportation to work, lights in your house, water? I mean, it, it seems unreasonable. I think more reasonable would be the $15 an hour. So you would give someone $1,800 a month to live. And then if they had three kids or they had, you know, under other extenuating uh, circumstances, then you use the tax credit to phase that in to, you know, provide that supplement. But I think uh, the federal government should, you know, require that all businesses across the entire country at least give people the baseline amount to be able to live, and then the government can take over for the people who fall above that. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we'll go to uh, Sam uh, Stardust, the Nine Tails. Yeah, I wanted to go back a little bit on, on you saying he Joe Biden is abandoning his uh, campaign promises again. What with what Pisco said, um, like we have these uh, ideas that why they could vote no on this bill, right? Either maybe they disagree with the price point, or maybe that it shouldn't be with the COVID bill, or maybe that the parliamentarian we shouldn't be overruling the parliamentarian. You know these things are are there. These doesn't mean this doesn't mean that like Joe Biden has given up on the fifteen dollar minimum wage or minimum or minimum wage hikes up in, at all. And I think that that's like a ridiculous assumption to make. Uh, that if he doesn't fight not, for his priorities, 
he doesn't fight for his priorities. Well, how am I? Why? Why would I assume um, that? What it's can a he do, Prime? Right? First, what, what can he do? So you can overrule the that, parliamentarian. Like, you can overrule we, we, the parliamentarian. We, we, that's that's what the possible the vice president, but, as I understand it, can overrule the he parliamentarian. He needs a mansion and cinema. Um, and he needs them. Uh, yeah, as I understand it, yes. I mean that's why we're not getting attached. Yes, I get that. But I'm saying that like. Um, uh, as, as I understand, the vice president um, themselves can overrule the parliamentarian. Um, if I'm incorrect in that assumption, uh, someone can correct me on that one. But he would still um, need mansion right. and cinema. So mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It's almost kind of doesn't matter what the no, parliamentarian no, no. says. Okay, well, yeah, but they, yeah, <laughs> but but the parliamentarian was bought in, so I'm saying that the parliamentary can be overruled. And who the who the again? If this is a priority of yours, right? Why did you give a shit what the uh, parliamentarian says? Exactly what you said. Who the fuck cares? No one gives a shit about process. No one gives a damn about that, right? Like there is no constituency for fucking process for like the arcane rules of the Senate. Like oh, the, the Senate rules were old. Like the Senate parliamentary. The problem was isn't ruled, the process. Right? The problem but is after you do all this weird I, I, shit to do the parliamentary over, you're getting overruled. You're still not gonna have support for the bill. So you're gonna no, go through all this. No, no, but no, no, but, no, no, but it was brought up. Someone brought it up. So that's something addressing. I brought that. it up because because I, I it, not with the specific procedural issue, but the notion of a candidate who's there to be a bulwark against radical liberalism and Trumpism. That, and that's the Radical. image that I think that Manchin has been trying to cultivate, and it's been successful for him in the past okay. election. So okay, I'm not surprised by his- Multiple things that you're throwing at me here. So one, yeah. I address the Senate pol parliamentary thing. Uh, Manchin is a separate issue yeah. that we've been addressing this entire time, but okay. Well, so, I, I was on. saying that, that right, he would get, use that let's issue. Get Sam, let's let Sam yeah. finish his point, please. Sam, finish your point. Yeah, so I mean, like, again, I mean, optically, getting this COVID bill passed is like a big deal. So if we keep delaying it and delaying it, that's gonna be look even worse on, on Biden in any way, I, yeah. like again, delaying this $2 trillion COVID bill is the worst thing that Biden can do, okay? So doing anything to get this passed is the most important thing. Adding this $15 minimum wage for another, like a little bit more optics isn't great. I think because you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose so many more optic points or whatever you wanna call them. On, on delaying this COVID bill than getting the $15 minimum wage attached to it. And okay. anyway, he can't do it because he doesn't have the- Yeah, that's also true. Sure. Okay, all right. So, but well. then this is my problem with the progressives as well, right? Because the progressives aren't fighting for this, right? Um, on the other side of this, right? Yes, well, why don't you don't, you don't have the votes for the bill uh, if you don't have this included. That's another option. That's another option. You're like, hey, um, the reason why everyone listens to what the fuck Joe Manchin has to say, right? The reason why people, Mike, you could rightfully call him the motherfucking president at this point because apparently he decides what's happening, right? Um, it's because he make, he's a squeaky wheel. He says that if you don't do as I say, I will withdraw my support. Wrong, right? wrong, and, wrong. Well, you're wrong. Uh, this is not uh, why uh, he's so powerful. Uh, the reason why he's so powerful is because you don't have the votes to do no, what you No, that's what I'm do. saying. That's what I'm fucking saying. Yeah, I agree no, with nobody, you. There's nothing yeah. to do with him being a squeaky you. wheel I or anything. I agree with you. I'm, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. I'm agreeing with what you're saying if you let me finish what i'm fucking saying you'll know that right so by by saying by refusing to vote right by upholding his vote yes you don't have enough uh uh votes for the bill right so on the other side people who do care about the bill right uh do care about attaching this amendment right they could also uh, uh withhold their votes like oh we're not gonna if uh uh this is not gonna be a part of it then uh we won't um, um, uh, give our, our vote. So, like, let's say, like, uh, 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 let's ignore this, uh, the COVID 19 bill, right? Let's say, like, okay, you guys disagree with attaching it here. Okay. Let's attach it to, um, uh, the uh, defense appropriations bill, right? This literally the exact same fucking uh, uh, math is going to happen there, right? You're saying that uh, this uh, COVID bill has to ha happen right now? Okay, I agree with you, sure. But during the defense appropriation bill, what changes? Absolutely nothing fucking changes, right? So the progressives in the House, Bernie Sanders, um, Elizabeth Warren, I guess, um, and whoever else, right, could also say, no, we're not going to vote for this. Like, we've waited long enough. You've said, uh, Joe Biden, that this is a priority of yours. A fucking choice is a priority. So we won't vote for it unless this uh, amendment amendments attached like that's another way to apply pressure because then you have to negotiate with them as well right yeah no, no but i just i want to be this is a function of our democracy and the fact yeah, that i know but they don't like it <laughs> oh my god but I, I just want to be like I, as a policy matter i'd sooner get rid of the filibuster i think it's, i agree it's absurd and i and i want to get rid of it and right. but again you know that choice doesn't present itself because we're we are presented with a world in which we have some conservative Democrats mm -hmm. uh, in the Senate, mm -hmm. and because they were elected, mm -hmm. and because we live in a democracy, and because they're the clincher votes, they're the, it's the same thing. Reason Anthony Kennedy but and all these Supreme Court opinions get to decide votes? everything. Why are, clincher, why are they clincher votes? What makes because them clincher? They're the, they're the most in the middle and no, no, the no, same no, no. thing in that, the Supreme Court. What does that mean though? But why do you have to only um uh um uh uh, why do you have to only appease the the quote it's unquote the natural, the right, it's natural. The right yeah. flank the right flank right why do they have to why is that the natural thing why is it natural 
Why do you have to appease the right side when you're pushing for the most extreme left policy? That what do you mean? No, no, no. Of course no. you're always gonna no, have to I mean, the no, I'm not in, in general. I mean in general, not just for this. Like, why is it because that that's, that's the nature? So, so that's the nature of American democracy is they have these natural tendencies that push towards the middle, or, and then you're feeling that a lot yeah, right no, no, now. I understand that. What, so I made that argument the other day, actually. Right, right. So, so there are a lot of things mm -hmm. that moderate. Um, the Senate, as uh, mm -hmm. especially as a body, right? Okay. The House is very reactive. The Senate is much less reactive. Uh -huh. uh, the nature of the Senate, because it's uh, the whole state, um, they have to get consensus there. Um, and so there's a lot of things that, that and that moderate the president, right? Because the president looks, needs to look like he's doing things. Yeah. So you're feeling the pressure of those forces. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And those, on, that on. pressure pushes to the middle, yeah. doesn't push out. No, no, yeah, no, um, no. But that's because those individual senators aren't uh, 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 pulling the votes as well. So like if they uh, had a similar strategy, right? Because at one yeah. point, the right flank of the Republican party was doing literally the exact same thing, withholding their vote, right? And pushing their party to be more extreme, right? We saw this, right? We saw this with the Tea Party. We saw this with the um, the House Freedom Caucus, right? Okay. We saw them. And they were stopping the There's Senate a, a lot of times. There's a huge difference with the Tea Party But, but I'm, saying, I'm saying that for uh, people, um, I, there's, a, there's an absolute difference, yeah, true. But like, I'm saying that um, your right flank, right? The, the, the extremes that he's talking about that are uh, off the moderated, they all also have the ability to withhold their votes, right? Just like any other senator. So I'm I, this. Yeah. This is me. Um, so, um, but they fuck over is, the okay. party and they make the party <laughs> look John, really bad. Does, and yeah, was, no, and what is Joe Manchin reason. doing? What is Joe but, but, Manchin but, but, doing? What does he do all the no, no, time? What does like, he? What, uh, what, when any when, well, the filibuster, right? The filibuster can't get uh, a leave. Uh, can't uh, we can't get rid of that because of Joe Manchin, right? How is well, this that is a not... rational crime? I'm going to explain it to you. So Sanders is is fine. He's not in trouble at all. Like a lot of these people, the same thing in the in the house, right? Uh, AOC is is there's no danger to her seat from a primary, um, really at all. And so there's if you know Bernie Sanders has not gotten a lot of legislation through over the ten oh years. Oh boy, oh we're not gonna do this again. Uh, no, no, but what, 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 yes, it's yeah. absolutely true. The whole thing is that men make king holy shit. But let's not get distracted. He doesn't face a problem for that. Hold on, let's not get distracted by that. There's no reason for all of this. But other other actors in this government of ours face the 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 penalty of not doing stuff and these are can <gasps> seats which are more at risk yeah fucking and so when you when you stamp your feet right and you don't let legislation be passed because it's 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 not liberal enough or it's not oh left hey, listen i agree with you on all the policy i'm sure not maybe not all of them, not all of them. i mean not the not co-op shit but uh on a lot <laughs> of it i'm sure um but think about this i mean if they don't do anything, the Democrats look incompetent. Oh my. And now all these seats that they might have won otherwise, they're not going to win. Oh, so they get a lot of pressure. I'm not saying from they don't do anything. Democrats. I'm saying it's okay. Hold on. So I, uh, my yeah. problem is I'm not letting. There are two people who, are, who I really want to finish arguing with you two. I love arguing with you two. Um, I don't care that Destiny um, uh, has a straw man machine in his back room, right? Uh, going overtime. Anytime he walks in my channel, apparently. But I thank you both for being here. But I got to let the other Listen, people. You, know, you can call it a straw man machine if you want. The actual mature do. thing that you would do, the actual thing that would be happening, if you wanted to have a real big boy conversation about this, then what you would actually be saying is, what do we need to do? to win the seats necessary to pass this piece of legislation. Rather than, okay, well, what if we overrule the parliamentary? And then what if we try to bully the, the razor thin majority we have? Maybe we can go to these states and we can do all of this fucking shit to, to, to get this bill attached as a fucking writer to uh, the, consol the uh, consolidation. I, the, the, like, instead of all of this crazy shit, to be like, well, what do we need to do to get like 54 senators? So, that would be, that's so the actual you're moving, big so you're, moving, you, so you're moving the goalposts once again. And I gotta let this- I'm not moving the goalposts. I'm telling no, you, no, no, if you no, want no, 50 no, now, we're in a place- Because what was the beginning of the conversation? The beginning of this conversation, the beginning of this conversation is what Joe Biden can do, right? Now, Joe Biden can't not necessarily get other people elected. I was talking about what Joe Biden can do. So stop moving the goalposts. That's like, what Joe the, Biden, what the people we in have general? 50 oh. Why the fuck? Joe Biden's not going to spend any of his time attacking her own fucking party. People do that all the time. The people do it all the time. People do it all the time. Like, even if they're in their caucus, it doesn't fucking matter. Because you have to get your caucus. It's a dangerous game right now. So, hold on. It's a dangerous game. Oh my God. Shut up. Everyone shut up. Everyone shut up. Everyone shut up. Because we got to let these ladies have been waiting so long. Holy shit. Stardust, go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, let's say we do this thing where you're saying people should withhold their votes. So uh, we get the, the $15 thing or something on the floor again or something like that. Is that what you were saying? No, that's, or, that's, that's something that he would that as a, as a as a he's saying that the the left flank should use the leverage yeah. that the that the right flank is using. Okay, the, so the so what happened with what happened with like M for A like a Medicare for all? What happened when we tried to do that? Nothing. There was no support for that. So nothing. That exactly right. So and what and wait 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 wait. So wait. 
What, what happens? Exactly what would have happened? Explain what, what, what you're talking wait, about. Wait, wait, explain wait. what you're talking about. I'm asking you to explain what you're talking about. Exactly what okay. right, please. Letter. Okay. All right. Um, so the justice Dems tried to withhold the vote uh, for to confirm, I think, Pelosi to get M they for want, A on the... That. Or they were, there was a plan to, or something. That, like no, that, that wasn't right? their plan. That wasn't their plan. That's not. Yeah. That wasn't that was Twitter, Twitter, Twitter people. That was a Twitter plan. thing. Oh, that okay. Wasn't All, right. All right. Okay. Fine. That's Whatever. With M four A had gone on the floor, right? It, uh -huh. it, like you think, what would have happened? That would have been a bad plan. I'm not advocating for that plan. Yeah. I'm advocating for a different yeah. plan. Well, okay, that's that's not same the same plan. fucking that's, thing. Holy okay. Wait. 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 Wait, guys. Please. Please. I'm trying to get. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um. So uh, the the reason why I'm bringing like this uh, this up is because um we're talking about this $15 minimum wage, right? And you're saying uh, that we need to use our leverage to kind of like force them to do that. I don't see how we would do that. Like what how would we do that? Okay. And right, then right, let's right, say right, that right. I've, 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 okay, no, finish your point, please. Finish your point, please. Uh, well, how 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 would you? Um, literally, that's what we've been discussing the entire time, though. It's literally what I've been I, I, I understand. Saying. It's just gotten I've, so muddy, I, right? I know, but like, it's I've, I've, I've said it like ten times already. Like, it's just, well, I'm, I'm, but, I'm yeah, not I'm, quite I'm, sure either. I mean, that's fine. These, that's yeah. fine. But like, I've literally said so, it ten times, so I'm, I'm so, that's fine. I'm just. Uh, you know, I'm I'm sorry if I'm I'm not understanding. No, that's, I'm not that's okay. That's okay. This is the problem. problem. We are so preoccupied with political maneuvering. Nine tails, please. Okay, so, Nine tails has been waiting. Oh, are, so, are you done? Sorry, now you're done. Go ahead, Sardust. Not quite. So, if like again, uh, I don't know how the the Medicare for all would have would have failed, right? Uh, and and we've seen the fifteen dollars. That's a different minimum plan. Wage. It's a different plan. Right, I I understand okay. it's a different plan, right? Okay. But using whatever you know power we have to leverage i that's not the same i don't like do you see the parallel yeah, kind no, of i like see the parallel you're trying to draw and i'm saying it's not actually yeah. parallel i'm saying that that situation in the house right was a very bad plan right like that was fucking jimmy mm -hmm. door whatever the fuck came up with that right fucking comedian yeah. and no shit right yeah. no i agree that's a yeah. bad plan I, I didn't i never advocated for that people have yeah. asked me about that i've never advocated for that um uh, because that I, wasn't I the right moment there are specific uh yeah. political pressure points right um specific times where you have uh maximum pressure i don't think that time with nancy pelosi uh, uh, was the right time um, to do the uh, Medicare yeah. for all, and especially since I think it would have died in the Senate in any which way, right? So, like, that at point in time, it hasn't. We already have this $15 minimum wage that's passed within the Senate, right? That's it's mm -hmm. attached to the uh, COVID bill uh, from, sorry, excuse me, not the Senate, excuse me, House, in the House, I apologize. Uh, within the House, it's already attached there, right? So that's uh, mission accomplished. Um, and the Senate, right, um, uh, we, we aren't going to have it attached um, because of uh, these uh, senators and everything else we've been talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. I think... Uh, um, uh, in this moment, at this time, with this bill, right? Um, or, like, let's say in the future, right? The, the Defense Appropriations Bill, right? A different bill um, um, that, that is must pass. I think that would be actually more appropriate. That's the difference here. Um, okay. I, I kind of agree um, m maybe at a different, at a later date. It, it could be something that people bring up again. But for the, the COVID I, I just don't. I, okay. I feel like that we are sacrificing political efficacy, basically. Okay, great. That's fine. All right, uh, but I hear you. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure. Did you finish? I don't want to make. I want to talk over you. Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah. Great. Sorry, and I'm sorry yeah. for making you wait so long. I'm arguing with uh, my man Pisco here and my uh, uh, straw man uh, <laughs> Destiny over here. Uh, but uh, let's go with um, uh, uh, Nine Tails. Okay. Um... Yeah, first of all, um, for those who aren't aware, she, her pronouns. Um, uh, so yeah, small nitpick. Um, <clears throat> more, I guess, like a PSA for people who kind of are like trying to use the natural wage to prove anything. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'm just going to get straight into it. Uh, so yeah, um, the problem with the natural wage and real uh, natural wage and real wage theory um, is that it's, it's all based on Malthusian population theory. And the problem is, is that 
at best, it hardly covers a certain aspect of like socioeconomics. So, you know, um, if you want your analysis to be limited, then it's fine to use it, I guess. Um, so as far as like getting this stuff passed, uh, as far as like what Prime's getting at, I totally think that you can make a bill that will be more appealing to Republicans. And like, I guess I'd be a bit swayed on this, but I don't think that there's, if you could, if, sorry, I could, I'd be a bit swayed if you could show me data, but I don't think that there's a lot of politicians who are like, have their entire career invested in not raising the wage of their constituents. So I think a lot of them could be put on the fence once you point out like in a pop, in a popular way that this is something that like their constituents could like and that you know, that this isn't just like a net negative. And so I think a huge part of this is not fighting something simply because it's not perfect. Like, like the whole thing is like, we're not going to pass it so long as we have people like Destiny saying, well, it's not perfect. It's not to my standards. So I don't think we should do it at all. Like a lot of things have gotten passed despite like all odds because, and that's how progressivism works. It, like what you're effectively doing is arguing that we shouldn't be progressive because it's not ideal. It's never been ideal to be progressive. And uh, that's why I think like everything from uh, niche Twitch uh, politics streamers talking about this to people getting on the ground and doing uh, fight for 15 rallies will make a difference in both like changing the public perception, but also like rallying together politicians to do more for this. Okay. Um, uh, let's Lauren. He's been waiting uh, quite patiently. Um, and uh, we'll go to uh, 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 Jola. Um, and we might. Um, and Dr. Vane, did you have something you want to add as well? Um, okay. So, so uh, we'll go to uh, uh, Lauren, then uh, Jola, and I'll decide what to do from there. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm just curious. Like, what do we think would happen? if someone like Sanders was to like withhold his vote, what if he was to be like, nope, this isn't, this isn't where I want it to be. Like, I am just saying it right now. I'm not going to vote yes on this bill unless it includes these things like $15 minimum wage. Like make it the defense appropriations I, bill because everyone's disagreeing with the COVID-19 bill. Fine. Let's give them that. Uh, make it the defense. I mean, appropriations bill. Yeah, no, but regardless. like another must pass bill. Just as He's helping strong. Republicans if he does that. And That's anyone who doesn't, oh, anyone who doesn't is, say is like, who doesn't recognize the same that? Thing? Is a mansion doing the same thing? A mansion says. No. A mansion says. No, hold on. Let's say uh, it's attached, right? Let's say. Um, uh, I mean, yeah. Let, let's say if the, yes, if the fifteen dollars is doing the same thing. Yeah. Let's say it, it was attached, but, but right? Unless. Um, the amendment did get through, right? But then it yeah. still needed his vote in the end to uh, pass any which way. Would mansion not be helping Republicans? Be said, well, because we have this included within whatever bill this is, right? Um, uh, I won't be uh, voting for. It. Would he not be helping the Republicans? Well, he's no, okay. he, he's helping himself the at risk so seat. he's helping himself yeah. who's more like who's more likely to lose this seat who's more likely to lose a seat bernie sanders or mansion but i mean neither but the, the, no. No. Mansion's no. At risk. Mansion. Oh, well, okay. that no mansion's at risk sorry yeah but sorry mansion is probably more likely to lose a seat um why do you think mansion but, but went for the supreme court justice i mean I, uh, gorsuch and, right, and right. the others right but it was because he's he's doing a cow he's not stupid right he's I, I don't know how to get it through your to people's heads like these senators not that he's stupid it's that he's corrupt <laughs> they, okay, I don't really care if Bernie. Equal. I don't really care if Bernie helps the Republicans because that's all the Democrats do. This isn't a break from the norm. Well, it's, so it's not yeah, an argument yeah. not to do it. Well, it, this is so, totally different. Think about the world we live in now versus the world we'd live in if the Georgia races had gone to Republicans. This is a different world we're living in that we need to recognize first of all. That with the fact that we're even having these conversations oh, and we have a one point nine yes, trillion dollar package. Agreed. No, agree. I, I, I agreed. Right. Okay. So fourteen. Uh, so now we're getting fourteen hundred dollar checks, it. maybe right for a smaller pool of people. Right. So uh, two thousand dollars was promised. Right in Georgia. Right. Isn't that right, buddy? Uh, but that's destiny, compromise. Right? That's the story of our of our democracy. But no, no. I'm just saying um, the priority, right? And immediately, little, little, I, I remember watching this happen beat by beat, right? Immediately, he, uh, Joe Biden didn't fight for it. He didn't put up any struggle. He was like, oh, what? Is, is, that, is that too much? Oh, okay, we're not even gonna put up, up up for a vote. Already, we're dropping up to fourteen hundred dollars, right? There's also, okay, there's there's problem, there's also problem, problem is, the problem is just a fundamental misunderstanding. This, like this, all just comes down to misunderstanding of how the government works. No, like, that's, it that's literally all. No, the stop, 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 you guys think you guys think that, stop telling you guys me think that Biden can come works. out? You guys think no? You think that Biden could just yeah, come out with I, a sword and shield God. and start oh, fucking angry, slapping heads off? Okay, in Congress, they can't do that. We don't have the power. I didn't say that. 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 I never said that. You keep saying that I'm saying that. I'm, I'm not even saying that he's going to succeed. 
I'm not okay. even saying he's going to succeed. The then original question, Han, the original fucking question no was what? There's a, there is. Oh my god! Oh my god! Shut up! Everyone shut up! Hold on! Everyone shut up! Let me finish my point. Ben, you can argue about whatever the fuck. Let me finish my point. Thank you so much. Great. Um, so I'm not even saying the original argument, like what uh, can a uh, Biden be doing? I've been trying to answer that question, right? What could Biden be doing, right? Um, now, what Biden can't do, what he can't do is make some unilateral decision uh, on, on including the $15 minimum wage, right? That's not what I think it looks like uh, for him to show that it's a priority. I've never said that. You keep uh, implying that I'm saying that, but I've never said that. Again, Use his body I understand, bro. No more, yeah. no more, thank you. Um, uh, uh, I've never uh, uh, said that, right? I'm saying that he can use um, uh, the tools available within his, uh, 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 the executive branch, right? Including on the bully poll, but yes, right? Um, to uh, try to move things on. I'm just saying, I want you to see him um, uh, try to honor his uh, campaign response, uh, campaign promises. There are plenty of campaign promises that you can actually fight for and you can completely lose on, right? But I'm looking for the fight. That's literally all my whole point has been, right? But you keep, Destiny, you keep, you keep, Keep straw manning me, saying that I don't understand how the government works. No, I understand how the government works. I'm working very much within uh, those uh, the laws, the separation of powers. I get that. I get all of that, right? So stop. You can stop straw manning me, our, right? Then because our goal you're, then fight, is we you're fighting Biden. me on some different terrain that I'm not fighting you on. You're, Biden, you're there's only so many. There's only so many hours in the day. Biden should fight the fights that he can win, rather than right. wasting all this time trying to threaten other senators and do all he this crazy do shit. That, like it's like go work on do all the positive <laughs> EOs that he's done. Like so, go look at that progress. Like work on that yeah. level. Like it's it, 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 it's also another it's understanding. Man. It's not just political. Another one is, is is a negotiational. Do you think that they just threw out this minimum wage? When you go into negotiations, do you put in your bottom line first? Who does yeah, that? Yeah. When, when you go to or, uh, no, do you do you back okay, off? Bat, do you ba immediately back off? Yes, no, 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 no. You, I have a question. You, you put forth an option, right? That it's something that you're not going to get, right? Everyone understands this when Hold you're on. negotiating. Is that what he did? Is that what he did with the two thousand uh, dollars? You tell me. I mean, what what well, so no. you're applying. No, you're applying that he did. I, I'm asking you. You're you're making that claim. Joe, is, that, so that, he, is that what he did? Joe Biden is simultaneously negotiating with a lot of different actors, right? He's trying to get Republicans on board. That's what he tried to do he when he met it. with them. It didn't he didn't they didn't go for it and they didn't want it. And he took a stand there. Right now so he why, is sacrificing so why something. Do, so why did he, he reduce the checks? So uh, what do you mean? Biden, first of all, Biden promised two thousand dollars for a six hundred dollar check had been signed. And then after as well. Did he do it after? Because I know yes. he did it a lot. Yes. 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 He did. Okay. I well, he I'm just this telling you that they monthly checks. Well, then the answer is just Biden just hates poor people and everything in America. This is a negotiation uh, process. Like, man, once again, go ahead. No, no what, what are you implying? Wait, why doesn't Biden fight for the 15 hour minimum wage? Tell me. I want to know for the people for the people here that think that Biden is choosing Wait, not to fight for the 15 hour minimum wage. Answer first from Pisco. Who's, it's who, because um, he he owns a bunch of slaves in his basement. I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. All I'm saying, literally all I'm saying, I didn't even attach um any um. Uh, intentions to him, right? I'm saying that I'm not seeing him fight for his campaign promises. And all of you, every single one of you, and you're gonna try to keep shaking me from this point, but I'm not gonna shake, right? So Destiny, you might be good at doing this with other people, it's not gonna fucking work for, for me, right? So when we have our, our, our fight on um, the corruption on, of money and politics, don't worry, you can try this, it's not gonna work, right? I'm not shaking from my original point. So you can try to move the battlefield, right? To somewhere else where it's a uh, more fertile terrain for you, but I'm not gonna go there. Uh, once again, uh, what I was asked, you asked me, what more can Biden be doing? I'm telling you what more uh, Biden can be doing. Now, you can disagree with that. You can disagree with that. But I'm telling you that, right? So uh, you can try to uh, get me to fight on some other train. It's not going to happen. Oh, You're not going to oh, shake oh, me. Who, it's not going to happen. Who, who, is, who is he compromising with uh, from the 2000 down to 1400? Who pushed him there? So one is... The reality is of, him. Become, of, of coming into office and realizing that the six hundred dollars had been passed, and he there's a budgetary constraints that got passed Why? in December. So, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that it is a negotiation process. He put out the two thousand dollars before this, but with the with American people, with Republicans, American with the conservative members of his caucus, all of them were. Like, Can I, ask them? I, I don't know what to say. Like, like it is not public opinion polls that he has to leverage. He has to leverage his. Constitute his um sorry his caucus other members of his party who are not going to fly for certain things he was also trying to get so republicans was, on so on board want the two thousand dollar checks republicans they didn't and, 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 anyway. and, and, and blue dog democrats 
So Mansion mm -hmm. talked him down to fourteen hundred. No, also, also I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't in the room where it happened. But there's a reason for everything, right? How, how come? How come? Dude, why would he do it? What's your explanation? What's your explanation? Why, why else? Why did he reduce him? I mean, you. I you by the way, you're framing no, it as don't a reduction. Don't let him cop out on the negative answer. To that why? Why? I want to hear it because this is where the lefties are so much more fun. Why? Why is Biden not fighting for the minimum wage? Please. I want to hear Prime Kay's answer. The, 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 the reduction, the reduction. So why did or, or, or the reduction in checks? Yeah, for well, either one. Why? Why aren't the Democrats? Well, explains there's it. There's a claim made over and over again that they're well, they're not fighting for it. Well, oh, they're not fighting for it. Oh, I don't know why they're. So tell us why. Tell us why they're not fighting well, for it. Um, they're bad at politics. Why did they reduce it to two thousand? Oh, to yeah, fourteen hundred. To fourteen hundred. To fourteen hundred. Uh, why? Uh, Sorry. I'm not entirely Nothing. Sure. Why did they? Why? Why did? I just why, gave why, you why, why did they so, Wait. Let me. Let me say something. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if this is it, but there is a theory that, like, uh, especially liberal Democrats, like the more conservative-leaning mm -hmm. Democrats, don't aren't aren't largely in favor of like giving money to people because they think it. They agree with sort of the Republican conservative idea that like it'll make them lazy and dependent on the government. Oh so that's blue dog Democrats. So you're so, talking about. Uh, so, so, and so it's wait, possible. Wait, it's possible that. Biden made a political calculation prior to the election and said, hey, look, it would be great if we had these two seats in Georgia. We could have some great messaging and say $2,000 checks will go out the door as soon as I'm elected. And then that, you know, spurred more people to more Democrats to go to the polls in Georgia, right, uh, helping him win the state. And once he gets in, he enacts his actual agenda, which is uh, less than that. I can get away with it. Who cares? But 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 what is he getting in in, in support of it? I mean, he, if he would, why wouldn't he give two thousand? Um, I'm not really he's sure. Getting, he's getting something from it, right? He's getting something which is support from oh, it's, someone, it's right? In line, with, it may just be in line with his ideals. I don't know. So I think the that we should have just. So I think that we should have just waited until twenty until after twenty twenty two to uh to to get. Uh, the fifteen dollar minimum wage. I think the problem with pushing it now is the problem that we're currently running so, into is not being able to pass it. I think if we if we want to try to get a minimum wage increase right now, we need to settle for didn't, eleven dollars. Say it was okay. great optics. Why don't we pass it? I said <laughs> he, because he said if you have the political can't. will, to uh, it, but we can't. Yeah, yeah, we can't. We literally can't. can't. What are you talking oh about? There's nothing wrong with the Okay. You don't necessarily have to wait till after 2022. You can you can just not attach it. That's right. Hold on, I, hold on, hold on. You didn't let me finish. You didn't let me finish. I, okay. the, the rest of what I was going to say is that until 2022, what we need to focus on is more popular measures that we can reasonably get passed, so that we can get as many Democrats elected in 2022, so that we then have a an actual majority <laughs> in the Senate. Uh, I, unless those Democrats I don't are, think are, are, aren't for them too, and then we can't put any pressure on them win. either. Great. Um, but yeah, like, and we're a possibility of, of, of also losing uh, there, right? Like, you know, actually, who knows what happens after that? But, you know, if, if the Republicans retake the Senate, then it's like, oh, okay, I guess we'll wait another uh, uh, two years um, before even, even uh, trying. Okay. Um, so, um, to my honest members, uh, if you uh, have been enjoying this content, this amazing content with us uh, uh, yelling at each other, that has been really, really fun. Um, do me a favor, hit that follow button, hit that notification bell um, to know when I'm going live. I do this all the time. Um, six days a week, uh, we have these conversations. Six days a week, we have people um, in <laughs> invading my my chat uh, um, uh, to have a discussion. These are all members of my audience uh, who uh, decided to join, right? Um, it's an open walk on panel. We invite all of you uh, to be involved, right? If you like that, you like the randomness of, uh, of a panel like this um, and the the absolute fucking insane. This was still tame. Uh, we've had much wilder open panels. Ain't that right, Pisco? Ain't that right, Pisco? No, that's correct. Yeah, um, that's correct. We've yeah. had much yeah. wilder we panels. Uh, we found out we can fuck our fans, right? And we found out we can fuck our fans. That's the thing that happened here. Um, so, okay. yes. Hey, nice. if, if that interests you, if that interests you, like the wildness of my open panels, right? Um, also, uh, my closed panels. Like, for instance, tomorrow we're going to have a primetime royale, um, uh, which, uh, if you remember the Austin show and remember the Watch Royale, um, it's uh, similar to that, but it's more political. It's a lot more fun, in my opinion. I mean, like, I. Uh, uh, I'm unbiased in that, um, but uh, uh, come check that out, right? We're, we're giving you all kinds of programming here. We give you closed panels, open panels. We give you game shows, um, and we give you a lot of content, right? So don't miss out. Don't miss out right now. Hit that follow button. Hit that notification bell if you want uh, to make sure that you uh, never miss any more of this. Of course, we have a YouTube channel, Exclamation Point YouTube, um, uh, in chat. 
um, let you know how to find it. Um, that's our YouTube channel. That's where we're gonna be posting clips. I will be posting this clip here. Um, and so if you uh, if you ever miss out, um, uh, hit uh, su uh, sub to our YouTube channel so you can um, uh, um, uh, follow along with this. But it's not as exciting as being live. So be here as well. Okay um really appreciate uh the strong support from all of you guys uh this has been <laughs> extremely interesting um uh steven uh uh one thank you so much for being so kind as to uh, raid my uh channel before that's really kind of you thank you so much um and secondly um thanks for jumping into the chat really appreciate you uh being here um this was really fun even though you fucking oh my god oh you aggravate me uh, <laughs> this is really fun um and i'm still looking forward to our one-on-one -on -one debate on corruption and politics I haven't forgotten about that. I just haven't had the chance to study, but I will uh, ch be challenging you on that. You still up for it? Yeah, of course. Okay, thank you so much, dude. I really do appreciate you. You being uh, so kind. I want to um, uh, shout out to my uh, good friend Pisco right here, um, Pisco ninety five. Uh, he DM'd me saying that he was going to come in and help me well, out. Listen, uh, I, 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 I agree with you on the minimum wage, and I and I was ready to have a discussion with Destiny about. I, I think the fifty dollar minimum wage is a good idea. I just didn't know there was all this like kind of pseudo conspiratorial talk about Biden and Joe Manchin. Yep, which I, I don't uh, I, buy into. Mm, okay, all right, mm, all right, never mind, never mind. Oh my god. Uh, but just on a real quick fact check, also because I, I I had to go back and look this up because this is so complicated. The idea that Biden broke some promise on two thousand dollar checks is just not true the idea was that, that instead of six hundred dollars we were supposed to get two thousand dollars they were going to change the payments uh alexandria look up the ads. what look up the ads they've ads with i don't have to look up the ads i got like two thousand dollars and that's, they yeah, and a, that's great aoc yeah. literally proposed she literally proposed an amendment to change the six hundred dollar payment to two thousand dollars that's literally with rashida to that was literally what aoc proposed that was, that, was, bill. that was what biden was backing yes they were going to change what was already being dispersed mm -hmm. they were going to change that from six hundred to two thousand that's what was being promised not an additional two thousand that was never what I was think on this the whole table. thing i, oh, I think I most people understood it to be two thousand dollars so yeah, like yeah, most yeah, voting yeah, people like whether they're wrong they or they not might have, whatever they might have, but, but even, like even i don't think even we should AOC make arguments that voters are stupid and that they were wrong like don't literally say two thousand dollars like AOC was talking about the other bill that passed in December. How much do you AOC was do you sell with Biden? The, AOC was talking about the six hundred dollar bill, the amendment that she proposed when she said, "I already co-wrote the COVID amendment for two thousand dollar checks, so let's go, let's get it ready to go." Mm. The amendment that she proposed was to strike the six hundred and turn it into two thousand. That's what she was talking about. Yeah, on the previous bill, and then they're passing another COVID relief bill that they said they would give. So why do you Biden, assume Biden, that that carries forward? Yeah, and Biden didn't why say why it was going to be that? an additional two thousand dollars. Now I understand optically it looks bad, but uh, AOC was right along there with him. Okay, so, I mean, like, yeah, no, that's not true. Okay. It absolutely, it's true. Okay. That was the amendment that she had Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Amazing. Um, this is amazing stuff. Uh, Eagle Eye Valor is my um, uh, um, uh, editor. Uh, he's been so kind to help us out that YouTube channel. Guys, this has been really fun. Um, and again, I thank you uh, once again, Stephen, for being so kind as to join us. It's really uh, um, uh, kind of you. And I can't wait to have our real fight. I know exactly what's going to happen when I do. You've got more shaman in the bag. I know, I know. Bring them out. Don't worry, I'll knock them all down. Um, but dude, I seriously appreciate it. All right. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. This is when you've made me upset, when I'm sad, because you guys are saying dumb shit. Oh, and this is when you post some good-ass not safe for work in chat. Oh, hello, boobs.